I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be violet sky, I could be hurtful, I could be purple, I could be anything you like. You watching Point Dexter Lounge? You already know. You're watching Point Dexter Lounge for the unity. Why don't you set aside an hour or two? We'll have a few drinks and a cup of coffee I don't drink. Hi, you're watching Poindexter Lounge. I, I'm choking on chicken. Um, hey, you're watching Poindexter. That's great. I don't. You are watching Poindexter Lounge. That's great. I don't. You are watching Poindexter. Thanks for the light, Jay. Smell like onions and you're watching Point Dexter. That's great. I don't. And now I'll make the point better. This joint's clever in the lounge with Point Dexter. So Point Dexter Lounge, you know that we can get it in. And now I'm headed up like I'm Led Zeppelin. Hi, you're watching Point Dexter Lounge. Do you like nerd stuff? Yeah? Then you'll love this. You never know what might happen or who might show up at the lounge. I just want to thank you for for being here. And being my friend. It's always good to have someone you could count on. And I'm glad you're that for me. That's great. I don't. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Cannonball! Give me a bottle of anything. And a glazed donut. To go. go, 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 go. What's up, nerd family? Welcome once again to the Poindexter Lounge. My name is Enosh, and it is great to have you with me in the mobile lounge today on the drive home. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about today. We've got a lot of news stories going on, uh, a lot of stuff. But first of all, I just want to say hello. I hope that you all are having a wonderful uh, 
a wonderful, what is it, Monday? Wow. Like, it's, it's Monday already, guys. Like, we're back around to Monday just that quick. It seems like the weekend was here and it's gone. <laughs> but you know what? Here we are. It's Monday. And there's a whole slew of things to talk about. What's up, everybody? Hey, what's up? There's my buddy, Max. Says, uh, hey, Nash, uh, I'm still working. Have a good stream. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy, man. Oh, you're always welcome. Always welcome. What's up, Ruthie? Good to see you, Ruthie. What's up, Draga? By the way, uh, Draga, I am, uh, I've been uh, watching your fan film. Uh, it's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. I haven't gotten all the way through it yet, but um, I am watching it. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Draga did a, a, a fan film, and uh, it's actually pretty cool. It's very Batman-centric. Uh, well, Tim Drake, I should say. And so, uh, heck yeah, good stuff. Good stuff for sure. What's up, uh, uh, Stefan and integrity is here and Hey, we're going to have a good stream. We're going to have a good stream. We are waiting for Austin. Uh, Austin is, uh, on his way, but in the meantime, we have, it's, it's not a, it's not a substitution. He's just, he's just cool in his own right. He's just his own thing. Ladies and gentlemen, nerd Cosa Nostra. What's up, buddy? What's up, guys? How's it going, man? You doing all right? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. man. Just just Monday. You know how Mondays go. But hey, I will but I'm but I am glad to have another Monday versus not having any more Mondays. That's true. That's a great point. (laughs) (laughs) I'm definitely happy to have another one. I would rather have another Monday than not have any more Mondays for sure. Correct. Speaking of Mondays, ladies and gentlemen, we also have RJ. I hate I don't, Mondays. I don't, know, I don't know what that transition actually was, RJ. It was just, you know, uh, speaking I thought you were of, sending me off like a Garfield joke or something. <laughs> <laughs> do you have do you have a plate of lasagna in front of you? That is the question. No, but I kind of wish I did. Mm, me too. I'm starving. You know what's funny? You know how I know that I'm doing a lot better? I'm really hungry again. You have, appet- <laughs> you have an appetite again? I literally have an appetite again, which is crazy because I have lost like 80 pounds this last year. And uh, and now I'm kind of like telling myself, wait a second, don't eat so much because like I'm really enjoying fitting into like much smaller clothes than I've ever fit into in my life. So, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, stress, stress will do that to you. It will. It will. But you know what? I, but I've been healthy and yeah. still, uh, you know. Like I've, I've really kept up on that and everything, you know, getting my protein in and everything. So yeah, man. So I've been, I've been healthy still and, and stuff, you know, just, yeah, just shed the pounds. Plus it's a little easier since I, since I've had uh, weight loss surgery back in 2018, you know, like, so going that while, you know, kind of curbing yeah. my, my intake and everything that uh, it definitely has quicker response time <laughs> than usual for people. Yeah. So. So, but, uh, hey, RJ, how's your Monday going, man? It's going good. It's going good. Pretty chill. Can't complain. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well, see, here's the thing. I sent all of my articles to Austin because uh, he, uh, you know, is usually on the show here and I'm driving. So, so we'll just go down the list. And, yeah, uh, we can just we wing it. Not, just wing it. Yeah, we may not have an article for every little thing, folks, but you know what? It's okay. <laughs> It's going to be all right. So there's a bunch of things that popped up today, though. I guess one of the easiest ones that like doesn't really need a story to it is this um, Scarlett Johansson thing. You know, oh, wait. Oh, here he is. See, we, we say his name and then he shows up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm here. I'm here. Jeez, so I love Jurassic World. I, I love well, I love I should say I love the first one. I really like the second one. Um. But I found this interesting that Scarlett Johansson apparently is being tapped to be in the next Jurassic World. Scar Joe. Like, I love Scarlett Johansson, don't get me wrong, but I'm just like wondering, like, where the heck else are they going with Jurassic World? Like, yeah, gotta give them credit for bringing on another celebrity, you know, like a, another big name, but I, I, wh- where, is this, where is this franchise going? Like, Jurassic City. Yeah, supposedly they're going to smaller stakes, going back to something that's a little bit more horror roots. 
supposedly. Or Jurassic Empire, Jurassic Universe, Jurassic Galaxy. <laughs> Take me to space, bro. Let's go. You know what I want to well, see? I, I, I want to see the crossover. I think they're trying to go back to basics with this new one because this is meant to be like a new trilogy. I think they're trying to go back to basics, and that's why it's like rumored to be Jurassic City, be a very smaller contained area. You know? Well, right. well, why don't why don't they just do a crossover with, um, uh, you know, uh, Fast and the Furious? Yeah, the Fast and you the know? Jurassic. I want. Yeah, it. yeah, the the Jurassic and the Furious. Uh, I don't know. That. We're gonna put a turbo jet on a Velociraptor, and Vin Diesel's gonna ride it, and it's gonna be amazing. You know what? But the thing is, the, I know that sounds funny. It sounds funny, but you know what? The problem is, is that between those two franchises, you can almost see them doing it. Y- y- yeah. <laughs> and why? And why? Simply because family. That's why. Because like exactly. oh, family. They have, you know, d- dinosaurs have uh, family too. Blue, uh, blue has a, a mother and a father, and just right. a, and a Corona bottle. <laughs> and a Corona <laughs> bottle. Can you imagine the, all the Velociraptors just around a little <laughs> ice chest of Coronas? Gosh, man, blues, blues driving around in some souped-up, you know, <laughs> Charger or something. Like, geez, I don't know. But I mean, seriously, like, like I, I don't know what to think about this. Look, because I've, I've really, I've, I've loved Jurassic Park. I loved the originals. Uh, I, I really liked when they, you know, kind of gave it some new energy with Jurassic World. But it seemed like, it seemed like even with Jurassic World, though, even the energy that they breathed into it, it seemed like it Jurassic deflated thing. really quick. Yeah. Yeah. So, I agree. so I mean, it, it, does do you guys think that Jurassic World? I mean, ju- the Jurassic park movies in general do you think that that still has any like relevance i mean the last one made a billion dollars they still print money yeah they yeah. they definitely have their audience for sure what do you think coach nostra you're being awfully quiet over there about uh, I'm, jurassic I'm just world processing Florida. scarlett johansson in a jurassic world jurassic park movie because from what i read um earlier to uh, earlier today as of today, they're only, it's only talks. She's not even fully signed on to even do it yet. That they've approached her to do it, and from what it stated, this is a reboot of the Jurassic, starting from Jurassic, the Jurassic World movie, which was what almost ten years ago. It's been nine years since that movie came out, 2015, summer of 2015. So my understanding is they're looking to reboot from that point forward, and this is going to be a whole new take on yeah a whole new trilogy a whole new yeah so it won't won't even really reference back to anything that's already been like any previous characters storylines things of that nature it won't even reference back that uh, any further i I mean well i highly doubt they'll reference jurassic world because uh i was the writer of this is the writer of the original uh jurassic park movie david Hmm. david so he is he is back writing yeah. Um, so I doubt I I figure they might probably they'll probably of course reference Hammond and some of the stuff from the original. Um, but yeah, it's gonna take place. Well, they 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 have to kind of build off of where the world trilogy ended, though. If it's moving chronologically forward, because like, yeah, if it's called Jurassic City, that kind of just lets you know, hey, it's a city where like there's a bunch of dinosaurs because well, dinosaurs are all over the world now, you know. Um, yeah. Wouldn't that, oh, wouldn't that be every city then? Yeah, yeah. Well, it could be a special city. Maybe they rounded up all the dinosaurs and put them in one city. Yeah, it's a, it's a special right. city because it's the only city in which Scarlett Johansson has to run away in a tank top. <laughs> let's let's just be honest here. Let's just be honest here about well, like now the casting for Jurassic is like like is there a girl who can run really fast in high heels? By the way, like that was the dumbest thing. I'm sorry. Like I really had a problem with that. With uh, what's her name? Uh, well, uh, yeah, you, even even the movies realized how stupid that was because in the next movie they made jokes about it and said, "No, I'm not wearing high heels anymore. I'm wearing combat boots." It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah in the final movie, to begin with, close up shot is her combo, combat boots as she's letting out. Uh, <laughs> but 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 yeah, to Austin's point, yeah, the 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 writer from the first two um, is coming back to write this one. And to RJ's point, yeah, I, I think it, it might just be a money grab because the last one 
was a two what two hundred sixty five million dollar budget made over a little over a billion. I mean these. Th- I mean I think these are definitely driven more towards kids, right? Um, and they and you know parents are going to take their kids to movies like this, and it's just going to be all about the money. It's in- but it's interesting that they're they're trying to sign Scarlett Johansson for it. I mean she's yeah. done, I mean she's been doing stuff. It's just not. Um, uh, big IP stuff, but she's been yeah. doing things. I mean, I, I think, I mean, one, like one movie she did last year, I think was overlooked uh, in general. I mean, she was in it. It was Astro- Asteroid City was one of the movies she did last year. I know it was widely overlooked. Um, it definitely had that like that 50s vibe to it. Uh, I think, I can't remember what streaming service. Oh, was, yeah, but, that's right. Yeah. That's right. What was that on? That was, I never ended up seeing that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, but she's, I mean, if you, if you take out all of her Marvel stuff, I mean, she was doing like one to two movies a year. I mean, she's done good stuff, but I think the Marvel stuff really took up her time and now she can, now that she's done, she's not under contract anymore. She can do other, do other things. So it'll be be interesting to see how this one plays out. Like what, what the story is going to be for this since we've already seen what six movies. Well, and apparently uh, Jennifer Lawrence already turned down lead role oh well that's so, not good <laughs> oh so well well le- okay but le- well, let's be honest though jennifer lawrence i'm sorry like i am so over jennifer lawrence. Actress, Enoch, all right we get it She's, my god i heard no. i actually heard that I, I actually heard scarlett johansson might be teaming up with lady gaga for this jurassic movie oh, so god <laughs> well you know what that that's how they end up killing all the dinosaurs that's how they kill all the dinosaurs all over earth is they they hook up Lady Gaga's voice to a megaphone that just goes all over the planet all at once, like uh, it's just amazing. And then they no, just pull off all I the dinosaurs from having to listen. Scarlett to Johansson's going to drop out. They're going to get Sydney Sweeney instead. There you oh, go. Lord. Well, you know oh, what? Lord. Listen, listen. Oh, I running in high heels. I love, I love uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson. I love her. Uh, wow, we got a we got a full. Uh, Group of oh my god, the in. dinosaurs are loose. The dinosaur. Right. right. But but here's the thing. But here's the thing though. Here's the thing though. Like I just I look at I look at it like this. I, I Jennifer Lawrence is very hit or miss for me. Something she's really good. Like I loved her in uh you know, obviously in the um Hunger uh, Games. Yeah, in, in the Hunger Games. I what was that comedy that just came out last year that she was in? Uh no hard feelings. In no, comedy. No hard feelings. I really no, liked that movie. He was good in that. That was funny. That movie was funny. And you know why that movie was good? Because she didn't take herself too seriously for once. Like, I've noticed mm-hmm. that. Like, there are some movies she just comes across like she is, like, just uber serious. And it just, like, the look on her face, is she, it's almost like she has this scowl on her face the entire time. And it's like, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Well, like, yeah, I, I, think she ta- I think she's talked about this, too, where she's trying to do more comedies and just do more fun stuff, which is probably why she turned. Yeah, loosen drastic. up a little bit. Just, just uh, Yeah, I think, that, I think that's what she's just trying to do, right? Because, like, she's already done the franchise stuff and the serious stuff. I think she's just trying to do more what fun. More franchise she's done. So. I like some of the serious roles that she's done, like American Hustle, Silver Lang's, Silver Lang, Silver yeah. Lang, Silver. Oh my God, Silver Lang's Playbook. I thought that was a yeah. really good movie. She won yeah. an Academy Awards for those. She won an Oscar yeah. for that. One, yeah. but, I mean, that, that might be what we don't need. We don't talk about that. Keeping her up is the fact that she's so young and she won an Academy Award. Like that's it. Like that's the limit, right? So it's like, okay, what do I do now? It's like, yeah, she should be having fun out there. Yeah. yeah. Right. She's busy. I mean, she's right. busy. I'm, I just look. No, at her. You know, she's got five movies right now in either that she's working on, either in either production or pre-production right now, up there upcoming. So she's even busy. See, and, sure. But I, but I, but I see her. I see somebody like her turning down a Jurassic Park. Yeah. As a as a precursor to like the quality of the film necessarily. Because I, you know, like I don't know that she's like one to just jump back into. You know, she was in X Men, but obviously by the time X Men, we don't was talk done, about that. We done. don't talk about that. We don't talk about X Men. I'm just saying, by the time X Men was done, Why? she was done. I mean, it was obvious was that she had, yeah. she, had bo- she was phoning it in. She, you know, she didn't in. care about being there for that. I know? think everyone so, was done by the time we got to the last movie. Yeah, everyone Dark Phoenix. I think out. everyone phoned yeah. in on Dark Phoenix. That last film you right. can tell was just everyone trying to finish their contract. The only good thing about that movie was literally the train scene, and that's it. That's it. Yeah, that was that okay. Sequence. That's it. 
I'm going to be very honest with so, you, though. I do, do not care about Jurassic City, Jurassic Park 7. Like, <laughs> I am so done with this franchise. Everybody, hold on, everybody, everybody, everybody. DL is about to rant. So right now, just crack open a Dr. Pepper and sit back and enjoy the goodness that DL is about to impart upon us. <laughs> yes. Um, I have... I've reviewed every movie too, and I I went off. So, so with the truncated version is why is this even a franchise? Why? Because it's making it's, billions of dollars. Because because I'm offended by this. Spielberg is paid him multiple times. Yeah, these movies making so much money. I don't understand. It's like six movies in, nobody learns their lesson. Uh, Fallen Kingdom and Dominion is probably the, some of the worst in the series. <laughs> I, I yes. do not understand this. What else are they going to do? What else? It's the same. It's going to be the same plot over and over again. We're going to be chasing dinosaurs. The humans are going to be stupid. They're going to try and profit over them, but they're going to get themselves killed <laughs> doing it. Like it's going to be the same stuff. And then you're gonna get, and you're gonna get the one guy with like Chris Pratt who just do the hand thing. I was like, come on, bro. Yeah, I I'm think, sorry, Scarlett Johansson is not going to save this movie, and Gareth Edwards is not going to save this movie. It's going to be the same thing over and over again. I mean, the last one made a billion, and should have. It should not have made a billion. Gareth Edwards, happened. like, he loves his sci-fi. He likes He's actually sci-fi dealing with, with questions and stuff like that. That's what gives me hope for the new Jurassic Park. He has sort of a soft touch where uh, I think a lot of directors in sci-fi are like, bang, bang, bang. They try to get it. Well, he, he lets things, like, play out a little, like, you know, slower pace. Stuff like I think that's what Jurassic Park actually needs. Uh, while I'm happy they're going like a horror route, I'm glad they're going a horror route with that guy, because I think he actually cared, like the creator was probably my favorite movie of his. Like he's getting better and better. So I, I I like that. I like that we could finally probably get the majestic side of Jurassic Park, like Spielberg intended in the like in the, the original like the beginning. Alan Grant looking at brontosauruses. What beautiful, awesome creatures! That magic. I think Gareth Edwards is the guy to bring that back. Actually. Yeah, yeah, no, I problem. can totally see that, though. But at this yeah. point, do we want that, or do we just want to see T-Rexes do bloody gory stuff? Because, like, again, we, like, I agree with DL. We've seen all the cool, like, majestic, cool dinosaurs. Like, either go, like, hard R, bloody rip some people apart type stuff that we've never seen a dinosaur movie do before, or just, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what else. What else you could bring to it? No, you make a you make a really good point there, Austin, because because at this point we're in the movie like that first Jurassic Park movie. Yeah, I was all about the spectacle, man. I remember being a you know a teenager and going to see that first movie with my friend Rusty at a movie theater that doesn't even exist anymore, and we sat in there and we watched the thing, and I came out of that thing going, wow, like wow, that looked real. That was that was stupendous. You could have these these big grandiose moments, man, where brontosauruses walk you know, past the screen. And that's all you're looking at is, you know, and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, you know, like, wow, they filmed just an empty field that they had to, you know, put a, put a dinosaur in. And that's awesome because it looked great and it was majestic and it was those things. But Austin brings up a great point. We're in the year 2024 now. Now we've got a million different sci-fi channel movies that have shown, you know, uh, Tyrannosaurus's, you know, eating people and attacking other things and, you know, probably going into space by this point because it's sci-fi and so that's what happens. Uh, But you know what I mean? Like all these different things and so what do do we expect out of this movie? I mean, DL's got a good point too. I mean, it's like, why is this a franchise still? I'll be honest with you. A lot of the kids that I know, I know that we're saying that this is geared towards kids, but dinosaurs was a thing like a while back. Like dinosaurs, it's still there, but it's not as big as it once was. And that's a great question. Where do you go with this story? What what happens with this? Like, I, I know where you go. You know what you do? You reach into the cookie jar and you do the idea they had no. all those years ago. That they no, went please with. don't. Human no. dinosaur oh, hybrid. Dr. Dr. Moreau? No. That's Get that out of Dr. Moreau. Crap out of the I'm telling you right, right now, that's going to be one of the ideas they have for this new right, vision. I guarantee it. Oh, I, dude, there's no way Gareth Edwards will do that. No way. Yeah, no way. I don't see Gareth Edwards doing that. that so somebody he's else, maybe. Of direct, he's not the type of director to do that. I don't see him doing that. Not only that, I think the problem is. 
and, the, last, and, the, the, and the creator. The, the problem with the last couple of movies is it was a race to get to that damn roller coaster ride, right? It was like they never really concentrated on what it's like to keep these creatures domesticated. Like the animal rights angle was barely brushed brushed upon. If there's a right, uh, it's sort of like the same thing but done well. I think would be the take of Jurassic Park. Like actually deal with the issues of taking care of these animals. And wait, wait, hold on, hold on, right? hold, yeah. hold, hold on, hold on a second. Yeah. Oh, Go ahead. Hold on a second. You want them to bring a park to America? Is that what you want? Didn't we learn no, I didn't. Well, the first two three, times yeah, when they tried to three. domesticate the dinosaurs? Yeah, but it was always just so dinosaurs. they could get to a motorcycle chase. They weren't actually dealing with the repercussions of the dinosaurs in the city. They were just like, we need dinosaurs there for like three seconds, and now we need Chris Pratt to chase them with a motorcycle because Jason Bourne does well with dads or some shit. I don't know why they did that. But uh, that, it was always like a race to get this to the roller coaster this... ride rather than dealing with the actual questions and the awesome stuff that Spielberg did in the original. No, no here's, the, here's the overall moral of Jurassic Park that they have not learned yet, and they should have They should have learned. Sorry for they should not be way. playing with God. That was the moral of the lesson. You bring yes. these dinosaurs to America, it's going to get ugly. Ugly! You yes. cannot control these 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 creatures you can't we're six movies in it's gotten worse and worse and worse and if they try to do it again it's going to happen again so, and there's so that, well, here, here's yeah. the problem here, right, here's the problem they keep making money so they so they totally gotta re, reverse their their their, their brains I, I, like, I think to get what austin wants a rated r these movies kind of have to bomb so they need to like restructure it it's like okay this time let's try a rated r they're version, not gonna you know? bomb they're, they're, yeah i know they're not so we're never gonna get a rated r one I'm, blow up the dinosaurs blow up all of them they need to die <laughs> what if we just had a movie hold on wait 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 what if we bring it all to an end by saying like, okay, look, the dinosaurs are out of control, right? They're they're destroying everything. They're killing everybody. We got to take them out. And so you, you have like a special force that gets together to take out the dinosaurs. Oh, like man. actually, like battle dinosaurs. What if we actually had battles with dinosaurs? You know, they hinted at that, right? That like dinosaurs could be weaponized and all this stuff. You could tell me like, let, let's see that. Let's see some of that. Well, okay, I, now, I, agree, I agree with that. Directed that by would, James Cameron. Dear God. That would be amazing. That would be, that would be interesting, <laughs> especially if you went kind of like a, a Planet of the Apes type route, type route where dinosaurs are only animals. You have these, you have like this group faction of humans that are so in support of, you know, leaving the dinosaurs alone, let them have their territory, let's leave them alone, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and create some sympathy for the dinosaurs in a kind of Planet of the Apes type way. Oh, yes, either yes. That or, I think that's the root. Or, or you have to go back to what the first one, uh, Jurassic World, was, and what made that interesting was militarizing the dinosaurs. Yeah, right. Using them oh, dude, as Austin, weapons. Austin, I think you're onto something. I think a post-apocalyptic where if Gareth Edwards does, because he loves the sci-fi, does like, what if the dinosaurs actually took over? What if we do wow. a 20-year jump and it's yeah, post-apocalyptic? I could see that work just without. I could see that. Talking. That would be amazing. Okay, okay. What if, what if the predators show up? Oh Lord! <laughs> and there's and there's dinosaurs that have been weaponized and militarized, and and the predators have to come and take care of the dinosaurs. Look, I know it's all it's all ridiculous, but but I think though, but I honestly think, I mean, all joking aside. I do think the idea, the concept of that militarization, even though it wasn't really explored, like if we got to something like that where, where you know, it, it was shown that they actually, somebody proceeded with that idea and with that kind of experimentation, and now all of a sudden you got dinosaurs fighting these battles. You could see dinosaurs on the battlefield, maybe fighting soldiers and various things, and you could get away with it where it's not just like, just you know, dinosaurs attacking people just for the sake of and attacking people. the next people. step is, is humans splicing their DNA with dinosaurs and creating dinosaur soldiers. I thought that's what Chris Pratt was going to do. I thought Chris Pratt had dino DNA in him, and that's why he could do the hand thing with every dinosaur. Oh. I, I, I swear to God, I thought they were going to put that in the plot. They've so been they trying to do clones. human dino they hybrids. They've been trying, they've trying to do that. trying to do that plot line since I want to say, like, the late 90s. Sounds the second one. Like, like they've been wanting Chris to do Pratt's this gonna like make a, a cameo with his face half wrapped. Wrap oh, this is a reboot. Nobody from the other cast is coming back. Nobody. It's the whole time reboot. 
Well, never say never. You couldn't even because, get I mean, the modified they... dinosaurs correct. Like the Indominus Rex and the Indoraptor. Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, they couldn't do <laughs> Can we stop? Can we stop just introducing bigger and badder, like, dinosaurs? Like, yeah, like, bro, just keep it the same thing. They end up just it's chasing the good. humans anyway. Who cares? They, they I know. Like dumb anyway. So who cares like, stop, stop making up dinosaurs Please, now. I thought the dumb one. Who cares? Indominus Rex. I mean, like, whatever. <laughs> you know, like. That's I, why I they gave Gareth Edwards because, like, he's the he's the kaiju monster guy, and they're, they're kind of trying to be a kaiju monster franchise. <laughs> well, okay, but, well, you know, what? and let's bring this topic to to an end by, like, maybe like kind of addressing that. Right in a world where we have now like several different incarnations of Godzilla and kaiju movies, let's be honest. You know, even a T Rex or an Indominus Rex, whatever the hell that is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's not going to compare to the scope and the, the size alone of something like that, right? So, yep. you know, so I think it's just, it, it's an interesting thing. It's just kind of in its wheel, its own wheelhouse. The people who like dinosaurs still, they're still going to go see it. Obviously, there's enough of, of them. And uh, parents feel that, like, that that's something they could take their kids to, even though I think nowadays the storylines are so much that like the kids really don't understand it. They're just looking at the dinosaurs now too, you know, like it, it just, it, it, it's, it's something that I don't know if they keep pushing these movies like this. Like if we're, we're not going to be here a few years from now, still having this conversation about this IP because I don't, I don't know what I, unless they just get away with doing the same thing over and over and over again, because some IPs get away with doing that, you know, and, and they just keep making more money and they don't care. And Jurassic World is almost one of the Jurassic Park. Jurassic World is almost one of those IPs now that is kind of bulletproof. You know, it's like people are like, oh, it's Jurassic Park. movie. We got to go see that. It's a dinosaur movie, you know, but like to DL's point, it's just the same freaking movie every time. Well, this is being reported as a reboot, so more than likely that first film, if it, this is a true reboot, it's going to be kind of like an origin film. How do dinosaurs? How do we have dinosaurs again? And going through that whole process, because because at the, we mentioned this earlier, at the end of the day, it's going to be about the money. The, the first six films and the investment. Well, I did the math. It was one point one billion dollars? That's how much it cost to make the first six, and it, and it returned just on the movies itself, five point five billion. Doesn't count merchandise, toys, and all that. So it's just, it's just like any and other not, large IP. It's just a, it's just a, uh, it's just a money printing machine. That's all it is. Not to mention, too, Dominion still made a billion dollars coming off the heels of the, of the pandemic. And they have an animated series coming out this year. Netflix does Chaos yeah. oh, Jurassic really? Park Chaos Theory. It's yeah. supposed to pick up from. It picks up from the end of the fifth movie. Uh, oh, yeah, wow. actually, the, the, that show, uh, the Camp Cretaceous show on Netflix, is actually pretty good. Uh, even the, um, I'm actually looking forward to that uh, that sequel series. That's a, that's a yeah. sequel to that show. So, yeah. One of the, yeah. I just, damn, there's so many movies coming on July next year. With Superman, uh, Jurassic, and then Fantastic Four. God damn. Yeah. They need one this, of them they is really. This, Oh, I mean, better rock, Scarlet, if, you better rock Scarlet, otherwise that date is moving. If, yeah, if, yeah, if, if, there's no know, way that movie's making it next that year. Date. It does, it, I mean, a year to finish your visual effects for for um, those T-Rex, whatever, the, those dinosaurs, like, there's no way. Just, hey, well, look, I'm, I'm going to be watching that movie for one reason, well, probably two reasons and two reasons only. Scarlet Johansson. Oh, no, she's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. She's good. yeah. All right? Listen. <laughs> Listen. And, and and as a as a man who has a girlfriend who finds uh, Scarlett Johansson attractive as well, we'll be watching it for Scarlett Johansson. I really don't give a crap about dinosaurs anymore. I don't give a crap about uh, about Jurassic Park or like how ma how many scientists can't figure out how to keep the thing contained anymore. I really don't care. But I will go and watch Scarlett Johansson run around for two hours, scared of dinosaurs, and. Uh, you know, oh, well, hopefully see. she runs around in heels like Bryce Dallas Howard. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, all right. So let's move on. Yeah. I mean, so real quick, this is, so real quick. Yes. there's a scheduled date for this. It's scheduled currently for July 2nd, the week right. uh, the week or so before Superman. There's no way. I agree. I'm just saying that's the current listed release uh, date for 2025 is July 2nd. So what um, is that? Potentially July 4th weekend. I don't know what the 4th of July falls on in 2025, but... Uh, well, listen, Enosh, I'm going to get going, but thank you for having me on, man. Uh, I appreciate Absolutely, it. man. Fun conversation. Later, guys. Absolutely. Yeah, man. All right. All right. Uh, so, so, back, so back to this. Let's... Um, 
another another really quick one is this uh, this thing of like the acolyte is using practical effects and their their curasan is going to be practical. Austin, you got you got that? Yeah, let me uh, pull it up. Um, on the... Yeah, I I. I'm I'm really digging this that like it looks like the acolyte is going to have a lot. They're not using the volume, uh, you know. I, I dig that that it's like. And I don't have a problem with. I don't have a problem with special effects. Yeah, I don't have a problem with special effects. It's probably going to be very claustrophobic, you know. Uh, you know, probably not a lot of you know open scenes, you know, like whatever. But. Uh, as long as it looks good, as long as it doesn't end up looking like uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, you know, with the Lee. rubber snake and looking like it's on a set when you're supposed to be, you know, in a Mayan village, you know, like, then I, then I don't have a problem with it. Um, you know, I, I just want it to look good. I don't, I don't want it to look cheap is the only thing. Um, but, yeah, apparently they're saying that, like, their Curacao and everything, they're, they're, it's going to have, it's going to be more practical effects, no... Like not all the CGI. So I'm wondering if we're going to see like areas because the, the article talked about how like they still have to keep up the fact that like this is before episode one. It's 100 years before episode one. It's the end of the High Republic. So this is like the height of, you know, uh, of, of the Republic and, and democracy and everything. And so you're going to have to still, you know, keep that up, you know, and and I don't know. What do you guys what do you guys think about the practical effects versus I mean, I, I think, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's cool. I mean, I, I like, I mean, it's either or for me. I mean, practical effects is always and always welcome. I mean, I would rather take, I mean, in a world where everything is like CG driven, I mean, practical effects is like pretty much like a, feel like a rare breed nowadays right. when it comes to some of these, these big, big temple projects. Um, I mean, yeah. If it, if it looks good, it looks good. I mean, I'm. I mean, I think I just trust the people at the the, the crew that actually can handle this stuff. If they if they want to go for a specific look, go for it. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, that's a precedence that they should have been sticking with since the since the sequel trilogy was starting because they were putting more emphasis on practical effects than that. But I'm of the mind that you can do a blend of CGI and practical effects. My thing is that when you are using CGI, I think they should use it when it's absolutely necessary. Um, so hopefully they have that mindset. My only thing is, I mean, I'm looking at the trailer. It does look good. The effects don't look bad in there. Just be, yeah. I'm just, it just looks better than Obi-Wan and Book of Boba Fett. I won't have that much issues with it. Like we need some of that Andor money and let, let's put it in this show, please. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But just... Yeah. I think some of these Disney Plus shows have, like, some, well, some Disney Plus shows, they look a little, they're very undercooked looking. They have a specific, like, sheen going on on the screen that just doesn't, like, feel like it's already done, like, all, like, 100% done. Like, the effects are there, but something about it just doesn't feel, it doesn't, well, 100% cooked, to be honest. Yeah, the, yeah. Only, the only Star Wars shows that look good in the volume is just the Mandalorian, and that's it. Like, yes, yeah. that's, that's the only thing. I don't mind practical effects. If you know how to use it right, go ahead and use it. Um, If you don't, then go ahead and use it. Yeah. Simple as that. Are they actually going to actual uh, locations? Are they actually going to set locations? I mean, probably. So, they, yeah. It's probably like an Andor oh, situation. Let me look it up. They, they like, should. it's like a that's what, like well, that's what they've thing. that's what they've talked about is that it's uh -huh. you know is that they don't is that they want to get away from uh, you know using so much special effects and they're that they're not going to use the volume. So it would seem that that would mean more of a return to actually on site locations. I think um, they're 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 filming in Brecon Beacons National Park. That's in uh, in Wales, and then they're filming in take place in Portugal. Okay, right. so they're okay. It's, All right, and there's still be some studio like like within the studio shots, but they're still on, like on location. And like wire works and all that good stuff. So okay. All right. Nice. Nice. Well, I mean, I, that's that's what I like to hear. I'm with you, DL. Like, I don't have a problem with with CGI, you know, as a you know as a thing. I just 
I, I, I agree with you that it's like I feel like I feel like it's the easy way out now and I feel like they yeah. studios more and more and directors like everybody just seems to be relying on it more and more and now we got all this talk of AI and everything else you know that it's just like I'm, I'm sorry but I mean that's one of the great things about movies that I've always enjoyed is, is being able to see things you know places that you know you could actually go if you wanted to I mean that's you know that's yeah. that's part of the joy of being a fan of some of this stuff is being able to you know look and, and have it feel like something real where it's like when it's everything is just completely computer generated it ends up feeling like a video game it, i i know i have less and less connection to things that just look cartoony you know um which i have no problem with you know for for scenes that make sense absolutely cgi that stuff all day long you, you need to cgi that stuff but like it just feels like we've gotten to a point where we it's really out of control sometimes i mean when you see some movies that just from start to finish you just, and, I, and I'm sorry, it's George Lucas is responsible for a lot of it because look what he did with the prequels. I mean, you know, he, pushed, he pushed visual yeah. effects to a whole new level. Yeah. That's well, and, but, but the thing is, is even the people though, who are in the, in the prequels, you know, they complained about it because they had nothing to act against. They were literally walking into a room that's just blue from, from floor to ceiling and, and told, hey, okay, so there's an alien here, you know, and I get it, they're actors, they, they need to be able to act and whatnot, but they're not actually responding to anything. They're just, you know, they're, they're trying, and people have gotten better, but, you know, it still annoys me whenever there's a CGI character and you look at the live action person supposedly interacting with that CGI character, and as good as they can make it, it's so many times it's still just, you, you it just see iffy, them. Yeah. Yeah, you see that that person's not really looking at something. They're looking at something that was a placeholder there, and it's not like it's a real creature or person, you know, that they're, they're interacting at, they're with. They're looking at a tennis ball for most right. of the time. Right, right. To be, to be fair, though, like, because I do agree with you, the, you know, with the, with the prequels, but, like, I do think, you know, because that was the first of its kind, and George Lucas was trying something new, and George was walking so other filmmakers can yeah. run. Because I do think there's other filmmakers that have perfected that, like James Cameron with Avatar, or um, John Favreau with The Jungle Book and Lion King and stuff like that. And yeah. eventually, James Cameron is the goat. Like he, nobody's ever touched him. Yeah. So there are there are examples where that can be done well, but like as you said, like it, sure. it, it's gotten to a point where like people are lazily doing that you know just to, to cut corners you know using cgi everywhere when it's just easier for them to do and it's like they don't need to but, and then you right well and it makes you, like, i was gonna say it makes you wonder too like like you know we're talking about cutting corners for example like even with the ai talk nowadays right like yeah some stuff looks good but like why are we doing this you know what i mean like there's i i, I don't know it just i i get the push i i understand like People want more in their their arsenal of you know things to be able to pull out and you know and stuff. But in, in reality, I, I just don't think it always works. And I, I think yeah, that I it think makes things look look more and more cheap. And and I, and I have less and less connections to some of these films that I've loved, you know, film series that I've loved. And all of a sudden, you get new you know things in there. It's like, what the heck is this? You know, it just I don't know. I want to ask you. Speaking of AI, because I know everyone's very split on this, and this is actually one example of AI where I'm thinking, like, with, it, with they they could they're, we're pretty soon getting to a point where this this can be perfected. Like we're almost there. But like, what did you think about? And I know you probably mixed on this too. What did you think about Luke and Book of Boba Fett? Because when I saw that, I was like, holy crap! <laughs> they they brought young Luke out of a time capsule. And put him in this show, because like at the, the end of Mandalorian season two, it did his face did look kind of wonky. But in Book of Boba Fett, I was like, oh my god, they they gave <laughs> they gave Mark Hamill the found of youth in that. Like it looks so real. How did you feel about that? <laughs> um, man, I, I don't I don't know, man. It's just like. I I think I heard like like a guy use like deep like they use like deep fake on YouTube to hire him to do the um the the Luke face. Um I think that's what I heard about about that to do it. 
So, I mean, it looks good, but I mean, with AI, I mean, I like, I, I'm a person that actually is fascinated with, with AI and stuff, but I can, I do see both sides saying this is kind of a very, I don't know, controversial, I, I quote unquote controversial thing to use. There are some benefits to it, but I do think it's almost kind of a little I don't know, overblown. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of like a, a thing. I'm kind of, um, I have a different opinion on it. So I don't know. I don't mind it. I mean, the, the Luke thing was amazing. If you, if you, if you could do a right show, go ahead. But then people even are like getting, a, uh, people are getting tired of that thing. Cause seeing like, come on, just hire so me. I'll, yeah. So I'll even say, like young Indy in Dial of Destiny. I was impressed with that too. Yeah, outside that was good. Of young Indy was, was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would watch a whole movie. I would watch a yeah. whole movie of that. Good. You you give me a young Indiana Jones adventure with that kind of quality. I'm sorry, I was looking for. There was a. I think Disney. What was last year? A year a year ago, or two years ago, they announced a Disney Plus for Indiana Jones. But I don't know what ever happened to that show. Well, I don't know, but I'm just saying, yeah. like, like you, you give me something like that because I was looking for the discrepancies there. I was looking for something wrong with that Indiana Jones uh scene and it was great now i will say about about book of boba fett so because i have been i've gone on record as saying i really did not like the first appearance of luke it was super cool except for the fact that the cgi looked horrible and nobody wants to talk about that everybody was so emotional about it and maybe it's because I, i've said it over and over again because nicotina spoiled it for me uh i think that i was able to actually look at it in a um non fanboy kind of way because everybody just kind of looked at it as a fanboy situation and was just like, Oh my God, it's Luke. He's so awesome. And yeah, it was cool seeing a stunt person, you know, swing a lightsaber around and be in the Luke Skywalker outfit. But I kept saying to myself, please don't take off that hood. Please don't take off that. Oh, you're hood. talking about Mandalorian. Please. Two, yeah. That's what I'm talking about first. I'm yeah. saying I hated that because as soon as he took, he took that off, off the hood, yeah. as soon as he took the hood off, it looked horrible. It just looked bad, and I'm sorry for for those who just absolutely love it. I get it, and I'm hold on just one second. Hi, hi, hi how are you? Good. Mwah. Hello. Hi, everybody. Oh, hello. We're all saying hi. You want to put that? In, so you can hear him. Hello, Shayna. Yeah, I heard. I kind of. Hi. Oh. Oops. You got it now. Okay. Yeah, hello, Shayna. Hey. Hi. Hello. <laughs> So, What's up? uh, no, we're just talking about like CGI and stuff. And so, yeah, I was listening. so the, you know, so when it comes to that, I, I just had a real problem with it because I, I looked back on it and I just said, it's a cool scene. It could have been so much better. And I hope that at some point they redo that scene. I hope that they go back and touch it up and, and do whatever they did, what they did in, in book of Boba Fett, because by the time you got to book of Boba Fett and you had those training scenes, man with Luke and Grogu and ah Ahsoka, that looked great. Mm -hmm. That looked like a real person. It looked like somebody was actually interacting. It didn't look like a, like just cartoon or, or over CGI. And so I liked the book of Boba Fett stuff more than I liked the Mandalorian stuff because it just, it looked better. It, it had a better feel to it. It felt more natural to it. And, um, you know, and maybe they just weren't ready to do that at that point with Mandalorian. I, I don't know. But I, I would hope, though, that at some point they go back and fix. I mean, the God knows they fixed every fixed everything else in Star Wars. Right. Things like that uh, things that were not broken. <laughs> McClunky. I'm looking at you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think you're muted. You're muted. Enosh, you're muted. We can't hear you. You're muted. We cannot hear you, muted. Enosh. We can't hear you. Can't. Muted. You're muted. Did you Murray uh, just quit and come back? Yeah. <laughs> I can I, I can read his lips he's like, like I'm not muted. He's like he's like I don't know why. He's like I don't know why. I can I can read his lips. He's he's like, like, I'm, I'm, not not, I'm not muted. <laughs> Are you muted? No, no you're I'm muted. muted. I don't know what happened. I didn't. Yeah, I wasn't. He's like you're muted. Oh, nice, Rose. Can you hear me now? 
Yes. Yeah, now we okay. you mud, we Well, I don't know what was going on because I wasn't muted in the thing and I wasn't. Uh, oh, so. oh, there's probably connection problems. Oh, no. Times where. Dang it. Let me get inside to my, uh, my uh, internet here. But I just don't understand why sometimes we have really great CGI that looks amazing. And then other times we have CGI that looks like absolute garbage. <laughs> he got good old frozen, yes. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of like we just um depends on the director. Yeah, the the, the, the time that they give to the to the special effects team mm -hmm. or um how much how much CGI it will take to do that, like you know, well, I think it's per personally I feel um it's it's mostly the like studio management and stuff. Cause like well, I think I saw I saw um a TikTok when the flash cut came out, like a week after the movie, everybody was talking about the oh, the CG effects are so garbage and stuff. The reason why it looked like that, probably like it was a dude that actually worked on the flash talking about it, and it was basically something to do with shareholders and the studios and want to get this thing out as quick as possible and that's kind of what what people don't really touch upon is the shareholders shareholders kind of really they ruin everything honestly shareholders do kind of ruin everything because they always wants to no get this thing out as quick as possible yeah i mean i don't mind like if you have a good director that knows how to do the great cg then yeah, but uh, it's, it's just also it takes a lot of time with the uh, scheduling and stuff. And when you finish a scene, you send the uh, send the uh, um the scene to the visual effects team to say. Here's the thing though. The Here's the thing though. But this is what I'm saying though. This is what I'm saying. There needs to be better oversight because there shouldn't be that much of a discrepancy in a Disney property between directors that bad. You should not have one thing that looks absolutely like garbage. And I don't care how many people want to want to like sing its praises. They're they're not singing the praises of the quality of what it actually is. They're just singing the praises of the fact that they got to see Luke Skywalker again. And I get that, but let's be honest about it, right? Let's not tell Disney that this looked good and that this was acceptable. It's really cool that you did this. It's really cool that you showed you know Luke uh, uh, kicking butt, man, taking names and and you know, swinging around like that. And I mean, what a great callback even to the Vader scene from Rogue One, you know? Yes. Like, it was it was very, very cool. Mm -hmm. But why do you have the stupid reveal at the end when you know it's not on par? And then later you do another one. So I get it, yeah, different directors, you know, probably different people working on the CGI. But listen, if you cannot, if you're Disney and you cannot have a streamlined process for that, where there's a quality control that before you put something out like that, you go, hey, maybe this isn't the best idea. That's all I'm saying. And I mean, because yeah. we see it, it's hit or miss. It's like sometimes it's great and sometimes it sucks. And I get it, it's budget. I, I understand all those things, okay? I understand that they can only do what they can do with what they have. But again, with we're not talking about individual projects i i i'm not talking about like rebel moon versus other things that Zack snyder has done right because he's got a certain budget and he's got to play within that right but this is disney and this is one of your flagship shows this is a flagship character in in luke skywalker if you're going to cgi him you would think that you would want it to be the best that it could possibly be because you only get one mo you only get one chance to do that reveal. Mm -hmm. And for me, it just and maybe I'm maybe I'm the only one, but for me, it just it ruined it because because no, I ca I can't look at it. No, I agree and just enjoy it. You know. No, no, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. Even though, like when I first saw that, I was. I'm going to be honest. I was one of those people that did shed a tear when I first saw it. I'm not going to lie. Sure. However, you are absolutely right. That face reveal, I was like, whoa, what, what was that? What was that? This is Disney, as you said, that, like, you know, should have money up there, you know what? And they, they, and it's, it's even weirder because John Favreau and Dave Filoni was working on this. And we know yeah. what John Favreau's capable of effects wise. Right. I can't believe he approved that. 
you know? And it's it makes you look worse because you have stuff like the creator from Gareth Edwards that cost eighty million dollars, and look at the effects of that. Absolutely beautiful. Two hundred like, million dollar looking movie. That's crazy. Yeah, it, it, it's so crazy. And then like the, you you prove stuff like that. Now I'm glad <laughs> they fixed that later, but it's like why did you do that? Why did you get the people that did that the first time? Right. First time. <laughs> Right, hey, these guys did a good job the, over the, here. The, Let's the, get people that the, the people that they hired for the um, book season two was um, YouTubers who did it right in, in fix and, and then they give them a contract. So, See, oh, they're spending think... too much money on yeah. effects. With, like, like, they don't know how to actually like manage their, their production and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. there's easier ways to do stuff to make it look just as good. Like... That's the thing with Hollywood. Well, there's They're no there's no reason why that Luke Skywalker reveal should should have looked like barely a step up from Tron Legacy. Does look like something. Oh. It, it looked like it looked like Jeff Bridges' character from yeah. It, it was very flat. Yeah. It did not. It didn't. It didn't look three dimensional. It didn't. It, it looked like it was just something superimposed on the screen. And yeah, so like I would just I I I, I don't understand either why. We have some that are amazing, you know, and then like it's not even the early stages of that, you know, kind of technology because we've seen other directors and studios use it very well. So, Fuck. you know, I don't know. I don't know. But it's it's definitely something to, I don't know, to, to keep an eye on and, and to keep a mind about, you know, as, as we're watching these uh you know, films coming out, but, but I also think we got to be honest. Like we, we can't just get all fanboy on stuff and then be like, Oh, this is amazing because that's all you're going to get then, you know? But, um, speaking of which, you know, we never talked about the penguin the other day. The penguin though. Yeah. That trip. We, we, we totally forgot on Friday to talk about the penguin trailer. Um, I really like the trailer and now they're talking about that. It's like super dark, uh, uh, what's his name was uh, interviewed and oh, he's saying Colin that it's like Farrell. Super, Colin yeah. Farrell saying that it's like super dark and and gritty and violent, yeah, and violent. yeah, and not uh, and not the penguin could smoke because one of brothers banned it. Yes, which is like, too bad. I was like, wait, come what? on, WB, yeah, they banned, <laughs> yeah, they banned yeah. yeah. Colin Farrell, wait, huh? Not for yeah. It. For the Colin Batman Farrell. to have his, for him to smoke, and W be like, no, you cannot smoke. I'm sorry. That is such a minor thing. That, that is a, a minor thing. No. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, Colin kids. Farrell had to fight for it. He had to fight the well, Warner Brothers for I it. I gotta fight I for don't, smoking. I don't, I don't, I don't think he necessarily, he, yes, he had to fight Warner Brothers, but the, it's not the way we're thinking. Warner Brothers then has to fight the MPAA. It's not about any of that. The MPAA is still one of the hardest rating boards, you know, out there. They come up with the most ridiculous crap. Okay, Snyder. But this, said but this wasn't Snyder really the MPAA the though. This was just the studio itself I didn't, didn't want to didn't want to portray the penguin. I, That's why he didn't smoke apparently in the I Batman. I can almost guarantee it was the MPAA. That the studio is. It's, the studio said no because we don't want to fight the MPAA. Them come back with an R rating because you said smoking. We have to go cut that out again. They're probably Wait trying a minute. to avoid that whole mess. You, you can't give an R rating. Give the movie an R rating because he's smoking. Enosh. They were going to give an R rating to Batman versus Superman because they were fighting. It's the MPAA. If you know anything about their history, yeah. they do stupid oh stuff yeah. like this oh, all the oh time. Oh my god! Yeah, the MP. Oh yeah, the MPAA. Okay. Did you, did, that's wow. They're, I, they they uh, do yeah. stuff like this all the. They're very weak. Uh, Alice in Wonderland had to fight for the caterpillar smoking thing, you know, and would, would oh, not get that, that to. Like, that it's that a, is, PG. That movie was PG. No, that movie was PG because I looked up the IMDb for Alice in Wonderland, the 2010 remake. That movie was PG, literally in the description for why it's PG, Smoking Caterpillar. That's It's in the that, actual that PG. Is in the, that is in there, yeah. yeah. That, that is funny. That's the funniest thing in the world. And honestly, so, yeah. Alice in Wonderland is a PG-13 movie. I don't care what anybody says. That is not I, a it PG is. Movie. It is, really. It I is. wouldn't be surprised if it was the MPA. And, and with TV, yeah, um, Little movie prep had, had, makes a great point. This is a show. They they don't have to really worry about the go. It's all. This was already probably going to be TV TVMA no matter what. <laughs> like that's I that's mean, probably what they. I mean, it should. Yeah. Well, it's just I weird. Mean, I mean, you're you're dealing with a show that's about gangsters and like they they've said is dark and gritty and there's like death and destruction and stuff like that. And they're worried about him smoking a cigar. Yep. 
Like, where are the priorities that's, at, bro? That's the MPAA for you. <laughs> same yeah. same thing with the Pirates movies. You know, they're swashbuckling, killing people, sexy, all this stuff, and they're worried about um, the drinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because God knows that Pirates, you know, they don't have anything to do with alcohol. Right. <laughs> I don't know. It, I and and when, they, when, when they do, it's strictly, it's strictly to just rinse their mouths out so that they, you know, because back in the day, they just needed to be able to sanitize themselves. You know, and it was very important for pirates to remain clean and sanitized and, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, while they don't take, a, they don't take baths or anything. Like, That's one of my is, favorite robot chicken sketches ever is a lady, is, 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 is a chick and a guy are role playing and she's trying to get him to role play as, uh, as Captain Jack Sparrow. And so like, and then it kind of goes to a scene of like him as Captain Jack Sparrow with his wife and he's going on and on about like, you know, like, Oh, don't worry. I, Oh, that smells like vinegar down there, but just, I haven't had a bath. I've been out at, I've, I've been out at sea for, you know, the last few years, you know? And, and she's like, she's like looking at him like, what are you doing? And she's finally like, she's like, well, I don't even want to do this anymore. You've, you've just ruined it. And he's like, but you wanted reality. So come, come hither. <laughs> Like, kiss me, kiss me on my lips where I have, where, where I've been drinking brine and, and <laughs> it's like stupid, but it's great. It's well, Enosh, you know, hey, it seems today all, all you see is, is violence and movies and sex on TV. Where are those good old fashioned oh, values on which we used yeah, to, we used to really lie. Lie. <laughs> By the way, Family Guy, you know, got moved from their Sunday night spot. They are now on, on Wednesdays. I did see that. Yeah, that's, that's not though. usually a good sign. Make, I mean, I mean eh. they've been. Look, I mean, is like, busy. Been, He's a busy been, guy. They've been canceled in the past, you know, and brought back, you know. So I mean, it is what it is. But I mean, the show's been on for a long time, and let's be honest: the, if the Simpsons are still on, you know, anything's possible. Anything yeah. is possible. Yeah. Dynamite's on Wednesday too, so you know, not not a doom and gloom. Yeah, I don't know, but the, you know the CGI thing. It's like I, I just, I, I, I don't know. Sometimes I, it, it feels like it, it just feels like it's like not even taken seriously. Sometimes you know, it's like, when you're seeing YouTubers do a better job than major studios, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, doing something wrong there. Yeah, you know, get that together. So, uh, let's see, what else are we talking about? Uh, I gotta go, but uh, okay, I, good talking with you guys. Though. Good talking to you too. <laughs> Who's up for DL. the? Uh, yeah. See a DL. Who is up for the? Uh, Zelda. Um, the Zelda movie. I mean, yeah. uh, it's. I prefer. I honestly, ever since the Mario movie came out, I really thought that it that. Nintendo is going to have animated films based on their IPs, but I guess they they went to Sony and freaking Avi Arad to do it. I'm like, I don't even, I don't know, I don't know about this. I prefer it to be because Nintendo has a a relationship with Universal because they have Nintendo Land in in Universal Studio, uh, yeah, in Universal Studios, and they have a, a billion dollar film with Mario because you would think like. I probably prefer a, like a DreamWorks animated Zelda film, and that would be pretty badass since they did, <clears throat> they did great, great things over there. But I, so, Sony, man, it's, that's a bit of a, it's going to be a gamble. The character doesn't talk, so how the hell are you going to do it in live action? <laughs> Zelda talks now, guess what? <laughs> that's the. Yeah, I don't. I don't know too much about Zelda, so I can't. I'm up for it, but like the character doesn't talk. Like how you, and, and it's just like okay, sure. I mean the director. I mean I like the director. Um, he's doing Planet of the Apes right now. So he, yeah, so Maze Runner. Like, I like Maze Runner. I thought it was a good movie. He did I haven't seen. Him. I haven't seen. I have not seen Maze Runner, but I can. I can. I can. I like. I think I. I like him when he does visual stuff because he did like a. A canceled film called Mouse Tail or whatever, or for Fox, was, yeah, for Fox, yeah, it was canceled by Fox. I was like, that was that looked. I don't know why the hell you canceled that. That looked good as hell. Was after the have, Disney merger? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know that, but still, it's stupid. But then, but then, you know, he got the Planet Apes movie coming out, which looks great. And then, I mean, from a visual standpoint, I think 
from a directional standpoint, I think it might be fine, but I don't know because I still prefer it to be animated. That's just a me thing. Yeah, I think it would probably do better animated, especially with the the hot pockets ready. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, especially with uh, you know Mario Brothers movie doing so so well and stuff and all that. I I'm kind of surprised they didn't go for animation, but there is a big push people want to see these types of things like live well, action uh, yeah and well <laughs> yeah they, they people say they want to do a, a live action mario what we did back in whoa, the whoa, 90s whoa, you, we're not doing no, whoa, 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 hell no yeah <laughs> but like just back name? on off off up of that okay like right mm-hmm. now like we don't right. need any more of that i i'm i so can i can i just be honest with you guys you like the mario movie don't you Oh, well, I love the Mario movie. Don't get me wrong about the Mario movie. I love the Mario movie. But when it comes to Zelda, Mm -hmm. I have have this weird relationship with Zelda. Mm. I was a kid. I remember I was a kid and I had some money and like all my friends were into Zelda. I had never played it. And I went out and bought um, uh, Legend of Zelda. uh, what, What was like the second one? It was the... Uh, the Adventures of Link or something like that. It was, uh, this is NES days, by the way, guys. This is not like new games at all. Um, yeah, but uh, I remember buying it and I got it home and like it was not the kind of gameplay that I enjoyed. And so like I figured out a way. We ended up taking it back. I don't even know why they ended up taking it back because like you didn't used to be able to return Nintendo games, but they ended up taking it back. But like a- after that, like I I was never really into Zelda. And now I see the new ones, and they look really really awesome. But I'm not, you know, you guys know I'm not. I'm not like a big modern gamer. So not a gamer, yeah. Right. So like, but I like the story, and that you know, and that's the thing for me. It was always it was never really the gameplay about the about you know the Adventures of Zelda or you know the Legend of Zelda. It was never about that for me. It was really about the story for me. So I would I would love to see live action i i but the the problem is is like that's a kind of movie that's like even, even the picture right that we have uh for it or, or you know just this is just a zelda picture right mm-hmm. you're, you're you're talking you're talking a, a, an ip that like you really gotta put enough into it where it looks more like lord of the rings yeah. you know like you you can't just do that on the on the cheap you know, you're going to have to create a world that is expansive and that has that that feel to it, you know, for people to really connect with it. And, um, you know, they can do it, but it's going to take putting the money behind it. And the, this is the kind of movie that that really screams like you need to spend like one hundred and fifty or at least two hundred. If you're spending over two hundred million dollars on that stupid Joker thing. Like, um, <laughs> damn. No, you know what I mean. But like, you're spending two hundred million dollars on on a Joker movie that the first one cost you like sixty million. You got. I mean, you got to put that. You got to put good money into a Zelda movie if it's going to work in live action. You 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 know, or otherwise just do it animation and and call it good. Well, see, that's what. Well, see, that's what I, I was thinking. Was see, 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 that's what I was thinking because Universal, because Universal owns Illumination and DreamWorks Animation. I don't see Illumination doing it, but I can totally see DreamWorks doing it because they've done, they have a very prestige, have that prestige little edge going on than kind of most studios nowadays. So let me look at their past films. Well, well but I can uh, see them. I can see them do a Zelda film. But Illumination that, is the one with a partnership with Nintendo, right? Isn't that the... Yeah, but well, you know, mo- mostly Universal, I mean... It's mostly a universal thing because they did Nintendo World and stuff like. Uh, I mean, mostly I, I when, I, mostly, I when Univer- mostly when Universal does animation, like for DreamWorks or Illumination, they, every time the movies hit, it's a big hit. They always lay off their people, so like it's just like okay, sure. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. I, it's animation. It's like, but I mean, I would. I mean, we. I know we. We get in. They already confirmed we get in Mario too. So I would I would like more spin-off of that universe. I would like a uh, con, whatever they have more for that universe. So you know, but I, I, 
I would have liked Zelda animation. I mean, I guess you could make the character talk again. I mean, talk, but like that's not gonna be. Mm, it's whatever. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. I'm just saying, after Halo, recently. Uh, we, we don't talk about Halo. That does be, not be, exist. That does yeah, not us, exist. us video game fans, be wary. Like, like, you like said, the uh, only like, like Zelda, so far, Zelda doesn't talk, but I promise for the movie. They might just like Halo doesn't. Oh. Uh, Master Chief doesn't take off the mask before the show. Yeah, like, yeah, the mask every link. time I hate, I watched the last episode last night. I was like, "What the actual fuck?" Halo is one of the worst adaptions this is ever. That's the reason why I'm gonna have Neil. Whatever his name is Neil something. To they do have the Halo. they have ruined that IP yeah, for, ruined. for the screen for at least the next twenty years, and it's hey, we never get him. Peter Jackson was supposed to do a Halo movie, not mm. and instead we got damn this half-assed Steven Spielberg bullshit. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's producing on it. I was like, come on, bro, how are you producing this? Oh no, I expect shit? nothing less of shitty Steven Spielberg nowadays. I expect nothing less. He hasn't made a good movie in over twenty years, so I don't know about that. I like I like Wild Wild West. I mean, that's I mean, not Wild Wild West. Wild Wild West. No, 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 Wild West. You did not just say Wild Wild West. No, no, Wild West. Wild West. Wild West. <laughs> the movie they did in twenty twenty one with um wild, wild uh, West Side Story. Yeah, West Side Story. Wild, wild West. Yeah, that was I like first one. That one. First one was better. I didn't. Yeah, I, mean, I like that one as well. I like both of them. But yeah, it just that like, was an unnecessary yeah, the, remake, but. It, it was all right, but like, that's I, yeah, like the only so far the only good <laughs> game adaptation we got is um Sonic for the first one and two, and then the third one's coming out this year, and then yeah. and then and then the Last of Us TV show with Pedro and stuff like that. Because those and are even and games. even yeah. that was and even that was pretty accurate up until the point, and then it just started to, to go off on its own thing. I was like, oh man, you, you ruined that too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like The Last of Us. I mean, they do, and they're gonna split the next season into two parts. Obviously, season so season two and three, because there's a lot of stuff in the second game they have to cover. So, you know, so live action, hopefully good. Live action, right? Who? Because they haven't cast this movie yet, right? And not until next it? year, I believe. Yeah. Is so it Zelda oh. isn't so H- who... Hunter Schaefer threw her name in the ring for it? Yeah, I'll, she will be good because she's great in Euphoria. She was great. In, she um, definitely looks the part. She can she look definitely the part. Looks that's like for sure. Yeah, she's definitely sure. Okay. I forgot the young kid they always like um, that is doing Peter Jackson. Um, pre, um, uh, oh, the Percy Jackson kid? Yeah, I forgot. Right his now? Name. Yeah, I, they like him. So mm-hmm. I, mean, I don't like what whoever they cast who, a younger person to play that role. I don't mean, they better be good. Well, you know, th- yeah, it's look, it's it, it's it's Zelda, right? So, you know, I, I don't know how you guys felt about the about the um, the Mario movie. I I loved the I Mario love- movie. Oh, it was accurate. Well, um, like, it's I liked it. Was it, was accurate. Accurate. I liked it a lot. It looked, it looked great. I thought the writing was really good in it. It, it was engaging. I thought the, the the voice actors were good. Like I loved Chris Pratt even as as Mario. I didn't have a problem with him as Chris or as uh, Mario. Um, but this is Zelda, right? And Zelda also, I mean, just like Mario has a very you know obviously Mario is in the public zeitgeist. You know everybody you know has this connection with Mario. But Zelda is something like it's that step up, right? So if Mario is kind of like the cartoonish, you know, hey, we were kids and we all loved Mario, right? Because we all sat around playing Mario. Zelda was that thing that took it to the next level, right? And so then you had your really serious kids, man, who were into video games back then. Like, you know, and then obviously all throughout, you know, the time since, Zelda has held up as that. And it's it's something that people take very seriously. So if you're going to make it live action – put some money into it, make it look right, make, build that world out and make the world look like it should. And, and hopefully they do, you know, hopefully they do, because if they don't, we'll definitely hear about it. Oh yeah. We'll, we'll definitely. Yeah. People will complain I, now, like who, especially you got, you got the Mario movie, right? You better do Zelda, right? If you don't, then whew, then you're going to get your, then every fan base for Zelda is going to kill you with it. And yeah. They don't like it, and, and, and no video game adaptation thing doesn't like a bad one. So hopefully it's good. 
So then we got some uh, Marvel zombies. Speaking of the MPAA and uh, and uh, ratings, we got the uh, Marvel zombies uh, going pretty dark uh, for uh, this new show. Uh, you got that, Austin? It should be. It should be. I mean, it's animated. Yeah, it should but, be. And it should be like Invincible. How how I just go crazy, but. Killing spree. Yeah, but this is but yeah. this is also Marvel. I mean, it's Disney. Yeah. I mean, so like, I wonder what they consider is it because it's scary. It's the alien. I mean, for the, the one episode from What If season one, like, let me see the alien um, bites a kid and kills the kid. Um, uh, was that? There? I can't remember. Was it the Peter? I don't, yeah, Peter's in it. So, which is like okay. So it depends on what they're trying to do with it. So like, is it like, is it, is they gonna have a bunch of killing stuff, blood, whatever? Like, TV, so, uh, you could you could push the limit for TVMA, it just depend on how you do it. So this is a this is the direct quote: uh, the head of the streaming, television, and animation uh, department at Marvel Studios had this to say: uh, in terms of more mature animation, yeah, we're making a Marvel zombie show right now that is pretty intense. That's for sure a TVMA show, and again, it's trying to honor the comics. And what was so great about the comics was it's not pulling its punches. That's certainly what we're going for on that project also. Hmm. So Do you a, believe them? I mean, I, I mean, look, the trailer they, first. they said the same thing uh, about uh, Echo. That, that was oh, TVMA, no. and I saw maybe oh. like a couple drops of blood in there. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't I unless I mean we'll see they they're gonna really have to like you said Marvel TVMA is a very different thing. <laughs> yeah, like you have to like it, it's you could push TVMA into a limit just how it depends on how you do it. You could have a ton of blood, sure. You could have a ton of killing, sure. It just depends on how creative you are with it. Yeah, and Bradley brings up a good point. Even with the Marvel Zombies episode in What If, you know, mm. it was black blood and all they they have to do certain things to avoid, uh, you know, it being too over the top, you know. Yeah, yeah, they have. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I mean, the first season that was the first episode. I'm doing episode seven or eight. In what If, the first season, it's just like yeah, that was a PG thirteen show. If you could, you know, push like. The R rated the stuff like, like Invincible does, where they push the limit uh, every week. Like <laughs> that's, that's yeah, but we're never Invincible gonna get, crazy, we're never but, gonna see but, that. But, but though, no, anything. I don't think I don't think you ever see it. But it's just, it's just not any not game, anything even it. close on uh, even no. to Invincible. Like you know, I mean, like it's it's at the end of the day, it's Disney. And, and it's Disney Marvel. only sent, allows centers a lot a, a alert center stuff for their TV shows. So. They need to put on their big boy pants, like to be honest, at this point. Because I think people just all right, like I, I understand this is Disney, but honestly, you own you own Marvel, you own Fox. I think you kind of just need to just say, screw it. I mean, people get it. I mean, I don't I know people are saying, like, oh well, well, Bob Iger said, Well, we gotta protect the brand, protect the brand. Like, dude, you literally own you own you you own alien now. Stop. Yes, but now, but now, look, I, I, I do kind of agree, but at the same time, look, they have, they have been known for almost a hundred years as the family, um, entertainment, <laughs> entertainment company. Yeah. You know, they. So I would say, yeah, go for it. If they had, you know, like that's one thing I think Gunn, I think is is doing really smart and able to learn from going to DCU. We're gonna have the Creature Commando show, TVMA. We're gonna have. There's going to be stuff for everybody. There's going to be animated stuff for kids. There's going to be uh, the live action movies, some PG-13, some rated art. Like when you start off that way going, there's stuff for everybody in this, you know, and, and not everything is going to be family friendly. Don't expect everything to, to be family friendly. You know, like when you're starting out that way, it's a whole different thing. Marvel is almost 20 years into their thing so to to now at this point go okay now we're gonna start doing r-rated intense ma stuff it's they're they're gonna it's gonna be a a shock to the audience some of the audience it's gonna be it's it's probably gonna lose um some audience because parents at this point they are they are programmed parents are programmed 
when they hear Marvel, let's take the family. It's Marvel. Let's go. Let's yeah. you know. It's, it's the MCU has some intense stuff. I don't. I don't know. I I, I don't. I mean, I I I get it though. But I unless mean, it's Deadpool, where they make it clear in the trailers, because the trailers are R rated. You I know, mean, that... De- Deadpool has been a uh, Deadpool. The movie's been around during the MCU in its prime too. I I I I, I get it, but I I in my mind, I think this is because I'm a. 24 year old dude that don't have kids and stuff like that but i <laughs> i in the mindset that i think people just understand that we yeah, just want to see something a little different than just we, we understand because we're now we're now the yeah. kids that grew up watching it and now we're adults and now we're wanting some of that more mature content marvel's still like marvel's main audience is still that age base that we were 10 years ago you know, and they're they're not going to stop focusing on on that audience because at the end of the day, that that's the audience that's keeping them going because they're not critics. They're not out here saying, "Oh, Thor: Love and Thunder was blah blah blah." They're right. just kids. They're going along with it and loving it and all that type of stuff. Yeah, Blake, you're you're absolutely right. That's the difference between Amazon and Disney. Amazon isn't known for family related content, right. while Disney is the family friendly company, <laughs> and they may and they may pepper things in. And look, they're they're going to have to. As they've acqu- acquired all these different IPs, right? That and aren't look, tra- traditionally family friendly. I mean, you know, aliens, like you, was already mentioned, Pray, and, yeah. and other things. You know, like, but, but I, th- I think that I think that, like, with anything, I mean, it's it's them saying, "Oh, look, look, it's going to be dark. It's going to be, you know, scary. It's going to be whatever." And then we're probably going to watch it, and it's going to have some scary visuals. To me, you know, a couple scary visuals here and there, about as much as they'll do for animation. And, uh, you know, maybe some close ups of, you know, skin, you know, coming off or whatever, you know, where, you know, the mouth is or whatever. Yeah, the mouth, and, yeah. and, and they'll be like, ooh, you know, look, it's scary. It's edgy, you know, and, and in reality, it's just, like, you know, yeah, kind of like, part uh, of the if course. If it's chopping up heads, if it's killing or something or stabbing, then sure. It just depends and, on how you do it. It's just the, the first thing. Nerd Nostra has been very, very quiet lately. What, what, do you, what do you think? I think um, who, who's that? I think Marvel needs to take a step back and look how successful Netflix was with the characters that they produced. Mm-hmm. Look at Punisher. I mean, that wasn't a kid friendly show. Look how widely popular that was because why they, they looked at the source material and said, this is Punisher. He's not, we're not going to see a few drops of blood. We're going to show blood. That's right. the that's the character. I I think this is where Marvel has now found themselves in this hole, so to speak, where what they've been putting out, the audience isn't receiving it anymore, or they're saying we don't want this anymore. We want something different. We want something fresh. You have all these characters. Yes, they're family friendly. I mean, go on Disney Plus. Majority of it, yes, is family friend friendly. However, you can still put out family friendly content and adult content and right. multiple streaming yep. services m- multiple ip studios have found that ability to do that netflix yes. definitely being one of them and amazon being one of them amazon does put out you know fran does put out family friendly content but also puts out adult content um right I think so, marvel is struggling now to find that balance because that's the identity they've put themselves behind family friendly we don't want to offend we want to make this that whether you're five years old or you're 40 years old you can come watch the same film well that's right we're not there any we're we're past that we're not there anymore yeah um and you you saw that with the first couple phases of the mcu if you if you look at you know uh captain america one and start watching the progression of uh, of the story from t- from a timeline perspective even the first avengers movie compare that to the last avengers that first one would be considered family friendly when you compare it to the last one you didn't see battles like steve rogers having that big gash in his arm <clears throat> from thanos i mean they fought some aliens there's a f- bit of purple blood from aliens yeah. okay it was mm-hmm. it was nothing that extreme but i i think I, this goes my opinion and even listening to the whole acc- accolade star wars discussion i didn't um i didn't want to der- derail that 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 topic but i think star wars is in the same pro is having the same problem family friendly i think we saw a glimpse of what adult content could look like from the 
granted the obi-wan series wasn't the wasn't the greatest but we saw a different darth vader than we've ever seen before a very vengeful a very hateful vader now i guarantee you you give people more of that type of vader yeah a, a dark you start stop giving us jedi storylines i don't and i know there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of hate there's a lot of political hate a lot of whatever hate towards this show i'm i'm not i'm not speaking to any of that i'm speaking to give give us sith storylines yeah give show us those stories show get, take even if you revamped vader and showed us uh some of the 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 stories that happened in, i mean how many how many how many novel books that are out there around star wars there's like hundreds of them and and they i feel like they they have so many missed opportunities to take one of those stories and say you know what we've never done an r-rated star wars where we mm. focused on the sith and where the jedi don't win in movie mm. one they don't win in movie two and mm. they just barely won in movie three we don't see that it's always it feels like a rinse and repeat sith come on or bad bad guy comes on jedi wins and will, we play the theme music and we move on same yeah. thing with the MCU. A lot of these TV shows, again, feel a lot of the recent ones, a lot of rinse and repeat. No one was really, not a lot of people are happy with the what the latest what if season. Even a lot of people are saying, even Loki kind of started to feel like it was going down in quality. Uh, I don't know about Loki. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying everybody. I mean, th- I mean, that just goes back to preference, right? Some people love it, some people don't. But you can't deny the fact that MCU is having a heart, or Disney with the MCU. IPs are having a hard time finding that footing again that made it very successful. Yeah. And Whether it's what? movies or TV shows, both have 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 had a hard time trying to regain the confidence of the audience of what brought them back to the table. You so, know what? Can I uh, going back to the whole like Marvel thing and to, to put this in perspective, um not many people like there are people that that are that know about the MCU a lot, but remember when they see the Marvel logo, it doesn't matter if it's a Sony property or a Fox property or a Disney property. When you see the, the Marvel logo, it's gonna make money. Look at Deadpool. Money from the first Deadpool came out, that made money. I mean, it was different. I mean, not many remember, not many people really aren't. I mean, you're sure the majority of people know about the MCU, but it is a Marvel property because not many people really keep track of the mcu like most of us are so that movie made money second one made money and there really isn't that that much like pushback from people oh my god why is this a marvel movie r-rated and stuff i i there's a it's not like it's just dumb and stupid well, and then you got logan that movie made money so, it, but again, but there was but there was plenty. Those, wait, 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 hold on a second. But there was plenty of pushback on that. There, there were was plenty. Really? There was pl- yes. like, even when Watchmen no. came out. Parents there was were very tons upset. of pushback <laughs> that being oh, already. And look when Watchmen came out, and every and even every <clears throat> even when Deadpool came out. I, I mean, you go back and find any articles that first week where you had mothers taking their kids, thinking, yeah. "Oh, it's a Marvel movie," mm-hmm. only to yep. find out the type of comedy the things he was saying and i mean there were and that was them with with releasing you know red band trailers with the marketing being like hey we are a very different right like they made up that i love deadpool they did a great job in the marketing of going this is not your typical right and even then it's still both of the you're you're 100 right i remember the the backlash i that's that is the thing even no matter what that because marvel is associated with disney because Marvel is in that, you know, and because, again, they're, what, 15 years into this with without ever doing an R-rated or a mature project or something like that, that's canon to the universe. They're, they have found themselves now in a predicament where they're really going to, I mean, even remember when Disney Plus came out and they're adding Logan and Deadpool, right? They had to make a big deal. Okay, we're going to put parental controls on Disney Plus and make sure you set your parental controls and this and that, like... They, it's it's an issue. It is an issue for Disney. And I and Blue Jay, I agree with you. Whether it has the Marvel Studios in, intro logo or Lucasfilm's intro logo, it will it will make money. But what I think how we define making money versus how 
the shareholder studio execs think of making money they the expectation now is every film should be a billion dollars if you're not making a billion dollars you it wasn't a successful film Right. Unfortunately, that that's just the re- the reality of, of the situation now. Yeah, at the um, time, yeah, but a billion at the time. Studios loved making billions of dollars in a movie. One billion, oh yeah, that's a success. Nowadays, eight hundred million, seven hundred is good for studios. But back then, they loved good. That, but would you say back. that? But good, but not many people are saying it was. It's a successful film, especially when you're putting two to three hundred million into it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. If you if you put three hundred million in a movie and you had to make an eight hundred million to break even or nine hundred, then yeah, yeah, that's the yeah. and, and but look at the budgets across a lot of these films. That's what they're. That's lately the been the return by yep. yeah. you put in yeah just to, just to put the movie together. Then the advertising, getting the right. actors out there to to you know talk up the movie, and then ha- go look at any recent movie and look at the second and third weekend drop offs. They've been huge, yep. bigger than what we've typically seen over the last 10 to 15 years mm. with any superhero movie, regardless if it's Marvel, DC, I think actually, or Star Wars. Um, I think it was most recently, I could be wrong about this, but for the longest mm. time, the one of the biggest second weekend drop-offs in history was Batman versus Superman, and I believe Quantum Mania recently uh, beat that. It well, had one I, of the I, worst I, drop-offs in, in and then, cinematic history. And then, um, what was it? Adam Webb beat that. So, <laughs> oh God, <laughs> yeah. So I guess you know. Well, yeah. ultimately, for me as a as a fan of these IPs of these characters, I I want to see something. I want to see something different. I want to see it, it. It's it take a different direction. I would like to, again. When I think about Star Wars. I I feel like we've seen the Jedi story in general. The Jedi story enough. We have we, we know about the Sith. They've shown up in in the, in the various films and TV shows. But why aren't we focusing on those various characters and and building a universe around that again, where it's not always the good guy winning? I think you'd be surprised on the on the reception stories like that would get. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Even even with Marvel, why? I mean. In all in all the com- you look at all across all the comics, the Avengers don't always win. Captain Ooh, America, I mean, they don't they always, always win. Yeah. I think they're just I think again, it's just, they're just afraid to step out of outside of the box they've created for themselves to take on a more mature content because as you've all mentioned, that they, they've built themselves up as a family friendly content provider. And, and now they don't know what to do when those yep. things don't pan out. And yep. also, like, that's the reason why other Disney studios are successful, like Fox um, and Churchlight Pictures, who just released poor things, who had, like, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, what's, uh, I forgot her name. Uh, that was Gwen Stacy uh, from The Amazing Spider-Man. Like, she was naked and everything where Mark Ruffalo was. Well. Like, yeah, like, like if you, they, they have other studios that are successful for Disney. It's just that, like, for Marvel or... Um, they just kid friendly for kids, you know. Just you know, and as far as Deadpool yeah. three goes, we I mean again, we, we only know what we've that we've seen. We have yeah. no idea the right. studio interference that we could potentially see in Deadpool three when you then go back and compare it to the first and, and second one. This we're all excited to see another Deadpool movie, but this may be Disney fied, right? Um, where it's like, wow, this doesn't feel like Deadpool at all. This doesn't feel like the first or second film of the character. And I, and I feel like this is just a cash grab mm-hmm. and an opportunity to bring back what we've all been asking for is Deadpool and Wolverine together, having mm-hmm. Ryan Reynolds and, and Hugh Jackman together in the same film playing these two characters in this particular iteration. Yes, we kind of saw that a little bit in X-Men origin. Uh, well, sorry, Wolverine origins, but oh, really I forgot that wasn't movie Deadpool, did. but wasn't the, the Deadpool we all wanted to see, but. I mean, uh, who's to say that Disney doesn't have a major hand and say, yeah, this, no, no Ryan and no director and no Hugh. That's a little too mature for us. So Deadpool 3 isn't going to pan out like this. The only thing, though, the only thing, uh, Costa Nostra, that, that like takes me away from that, though, is the trailer. Because, uh, yeah, I agree. Literally, yeah. literally, there's a pegging joke in the trailer. I, I agree. Yeah, so that, there's the trailer. I don't know how, I don't, I don't know how much Disney, more, yeah. I, I don't know how much more, like, dirty or or you know whatever you get than making a pegging joke in your trailer so so for me that you know and and you could be absolutely right dude 
you could be absolutely right. Like yeah. they could still like curb a bunch of other stuff that's actually in the film. Right. You know, like somebody might, for all we know, somebody could see that trailer, an executive or a, you know, a board member or whatever. And all of a sudden start raising all these concerns because of Marvel or whatever, you know, like, what are you doing? You know? And then all of a sudden the final movie gets, you know, cut to hell. And that scene. Mm -hmm. And let's just say that scene is not in the final film. Yep. How many times have we seen across all these movies, DC, it doesn't matter. It's in the trailer, but then when we get to the final film, it never made it to the final film because some executive, some stu someone somewhere said, nope, that's not going in. So you need to remove it and reshoot something or just cut it all together and splice the scenes to where that's just not there. I guess the good thing is, is, is at least the Deadpool movie isn't being made by Warner Brothers. <laughs> if, well, it wouldn't probably get made. Right. Well, but and even then, too, I think, you know, I, yeah, I think the biggest thing they they have to worry about that is, is like Bradley said, is is Ryan walking away. There's a couple of things like, you know, I don't think Ryan would have done this if he did not have a lot of say and control. And he and he's earned it with those you know with those two prior movies making so much so and it's well known it's been it's been reported very, up, up very recently to how much pull he's had on this film right because i think we mentioned in one he's of got a writing shows. credit he's actually yeah, he's, credit. Yeah, he wrote like, the first uh, three he wrote back he wrote back the, um the first three writers for the movies for this one again well they and, wanted to bring yeah. captain marvel in and play out her uh character and that'd be her final film. He said, absolutely not. You're not bringing her into this movie. And he actually had all of her scenes removed from the movie. Um, so he oh, does think does have a lot of sway how this plays out, but hmm. that still doesn't mean we're going to see the same, the same character we're expecting to see from the first two films. There, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just right. being real. I'm just trying to be realistic in, in my expectations of if it sure. turns out that way, great. If it doesn't, then here we have another example where Disney seems to trip themselves um, over trip over their own feet, trying to give fans what they think the fans want, but that's not really what the fans wanted. And DC's that's been doing that for 10, 15 years. So yeah, we really yeah, talk yeah, about that. DC, yeah, DC just uh, sometimes. Hopefully, it doesn't happen with the new regime at DC, but yeah. But ultimately, I want to see more. I want to see more mature content. I want to oh, see sure. uh, I, I, the 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 last the last fifteen years have been great. Great films. There have been a lot of great films mm -hmm. that came through the MCU. Glad we got to see these characters finally come to life, live action. But let's start. Let's let's look at the villains instead of always the heroes. That's yeah. my, that's my take. Oh, I, yeah, I agree. I have no problem. You know, whatever they do, the X Men and whatever year in 2028, 2039, whatever Secret Wars releases, and we get Mister Sinister, Mister Sinister. As that's one of the rumors for the X Men movie that Fox has been trying to set up for the last ten years and fell at it. Yeah, you, oh, hey, hopefully yeah, that would be great and hey. and stuff like that and build that build that to a new saga. So you know, I agree with that. One hundred percent. Right now with the X Men, we got X Men ninety seven. <laughs> yeah, and that's a continuation from an old cartoon that people love twenty five yeah. years ago. So yeah. Did you guys know that there mm. is a secret? Mm. A secret, mm. especially. Hidden, kept from everybody, DC project. Mm. TV show. That's be coming careful. Up. You might be thinking people are going to think it's the Snyderverse. There is a secret TV show that's coming out. Austin, would you share the deets with us on this, on this huge DC show that is coming? That, oh, that we all are, are waiting with bated breath to see what, what we're going to get next. Uh, yes, let me pull up this article here. Uh, uh, DC announced. By, 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 by the way, by the way, my own personal uh, thing. Yeah, a a after you guys actually hear this, after me hyping it up that way, listen, I didn't even hype it up half as much as every other freaking website across the the internet has today. Like acting like this was like some major reveal. But okay, go ahead. Uh, so here we go. It's the DC announces imminent surprise release of next live action show on Netflix. Uh, Prime Video, yeah, Prime Video, they're talking about blah, blah, blah. All right. Variety announced that Netflix will host the release of Dead Boy Detectives, a lesser known DC property starting on April 25th. It's the imminent. Series, it's imminent. It's imminent. It's going to be coming like, it could already be here. We just don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, apparently, yeah, April 25th is tomorrow, I guess. Uh, the series was initially announced for a max release in April 2022, but it has since 
switched streaming hosts. Season one will consist of eight episodes with the entire season seemingly set to hit Netflix on the same day. April 25th, yep. Um, what? Hey, oh, yeah, that's connected to the whole... It, admittedly, they have they are going to connect this to the Sandman universe. Yeah, it's, but... con- it's in the same universe. It's created by Neil Gaiman, who's a fantastic comic book artist and an artist who created Sandman himself. But it was no one pro- this is. So, yeah. It's just, are you uh, sure this is from... Uh, is this real or this is from, like, we got this covered? No. No, it's from Netflix. Uh, right, Austin, I don't... Austin, who is... Uh, what, what was the article that I sent you? Uh, it was uh, the... Was it uh, what, what, the direct? The di- Yeah, it was the direct. Oh, I... I... I'm sorry, I was a little lost right now because the way you guys were building up, I thought it was going to be some troll stuff. <laughs> no, so this, no. So this one I found, as far as from a development perspective, this says on uh, it's back, it's going back in history a little bit. On February 24th to the 2023, the series was moved from HBO Max to Netflix. The series was, was reportedly moved due to it being incompatible with DC Studios co CEOs James Gunn and Peter Safran's plans to have HBO Max's DC shows be set in the DC universe, as well as due to HBO Max's inability to market the series before 2024. That's why they that's why they gave the rights to Netflix because it didn't fit in their universe. Yeah, which I'm not even surprised to hear. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Since I looked this up, I just see that's the thing. I've never heard of this until you like you guys make it build up to be so i'm looked it up i was like the, oh okay. the crazy thing is the um the the, the 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 whatever the show call is what is it called now um, dead point dead boy detectives yeah dead boy detective the show up in doom Patrol, i think was i think was in season one or two yeah I remember yeah, it was yeah season one it was it was it was those three kids that show up before whatever it was and then they got recast for the for the new show and so it was like intended to be a summer. spin-off of that. It was a spin-off for that. And then yeah. and then no. And then Greg Berlanti went to Neil Gaiman and said, Hey, we're creating this show that is your characters and um where you like, and we're gonna recast those people that's in Doom Patrol so we could connect it to your universe. He said, Sure, yeah. So I mean, I could get I could understand why James Gunn's like no, it doesn't make sense for our vision. We will we will give it to you. So you could um, give it to Netflix and connect it to your, your universe. Wait, hold on. So you're saying so you're saying a property that that they are not currently working on or, mm. or a version of of something, they're letting Netflix produce it. Yeah, that's like go oh, go ahead. You could mark in that show. Just like yeah, go ahead. If you don't want to do it. You could have the. You could you just somewhere you somebody it, is using this as fodder for uh, you know. Oh, sell this night versus sell this night versus no, 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 no. It just oh, no, it's just connected to the same same man universe and stuff like that. It's like no. Well, and those and those trying to compare Dead Boy Detectives to Batman, super, you know, the Trinity, along with you know Aquaman, Cyborg, and Flash. I mean, oh my you, can't even, you can't even compare. Um, as far as well, if you can sell and give Dead Boy Detectives to Netflix, give them the sign. I mean, you can't even right. compare. And and that's that was my point was that you know like look, it's it's a DC property yes but it's it's like you just said it's not Superman, it's not Batman, it's not what it's not even the rest of the Justice League, it's literally a low level thing that most people don't even know what it is, uh, and it doesn't fit into what they're working on. So of course you know that would be something yeah. that did you. Okay. If you're looking to make a show and you know you want to get something out there, absolutely go for it. Yeah. And this and this is a good thing because it's it's parts of the DC universe that you know we haven't really seen before a lot, you know. And 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 I dig that actually. I, I dig the fact that we're going to get some of this, you know, like Justice League dark type of stuff, right? That we haven't really gotten live action before, or if we have seen in live action to some extent, it hasn't been um, fully fleshed out. I mean, we got Swamp Thing. Yeah, but then they canceled it. Uh, that was tragic. Yeah, tragic. Yeah, tragic. tragic. It was like a ten-hour like yeah. movie. I loved it, but you know, then it was done, and it was like, oh, I don't know how you could get the tax thing wrong, but sure. What the heck, you know? But you know, they did what they did, and then you got Constantine. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a little concerned about Constantine and that whole situation with the DCU or whatever, just because, yeah. uh, you know, the Keanu Reeves movie is is fine. 
it's you know it's it is what it is but it's can we get in the sequel different. to that it's different uh and i don't see them you know bringing i, I don't know I, do you guys see that constantine being the the constantine oh hell no hell no no no, no. what keanu reeves uh, is constantine yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't even think we're even going to see a second film with him in it. I mean, the first one is, I mean, it came out in 05. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't I don't see us. I mean, we may get another Constantine movie, but it will not be with Keanu Reeves. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it could happen. I give it a 40% chance of happening because Keanu is successful, been successful with the John Wick franchise and the audience like him. Well, but if, 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 the, if, the, if the second sequel ever happened, I know the directors say, yeah, we doing we work on the script. Once we finish with the script, we're gonna turn it into James Gunn and Pierre. If they give us the green light, we could go do production for the second movie. But you know, it's just I would like. To, I mean, it became a cult classic for DC fans. That's the reason why every, people yeah, got well, two you know, I, mean, I see they, Keanu being more choosy with his roles once John Wick Five is done. I, I once he's done with the Wick universe after the fifth film i think he's gonna be much more cheesier with his roles yeah, yeah. i don't know i mean they, they announced this whole thing i mean that you know so i would i agree with nerd coaster i'd be surprised <clears throat> if it went through uh they did it I, this was all that was all announced before gun taking over and all that type of stuff i mean i i think the only way that it happens is is yeah is that gun becomes the dcu constantine I, I don't see them doing uh, – and even then, Constantine kind of is involved in multiversal stuff and all that. Like, I could see – I think that's that's the only way that that happens. Um, other than that, I don't see them going – like 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 Nerd Coaster Gnosis said, making a sequel to a film made in 2005 that, you know, I would, then didn't have really great reception. Like, yeah. yes, there's a following now, but I just – that's that's a big risk. Yeah, also, uh, I, also, I, I if want... they really wanted to, they could introduce Swamp Thing in James Mango movie. Constantine, like they could introduce Constantine there if they really wanted. Oh to. yeah, right. Because yeah, because the, char- the characters they're literally a part of Justice League Dark with Zatanna, <laughs> Dead Man, and everybody. So, so yeah, if that's I, successful, I so I don't personally. Um, uh, I, I'm I'm not wanting them to bring him back. I mean, I, I love Keanu Reeves. So, yeah, he's great. Yeah, but, but but I mean, that movie was not something that like stood out to me. I'm not part of the the resurgence of that movie. You know, of like people <laughs> love that movie. It was it was a movie that I saw. I remember when I saw it when it came out, and it it just was like I, I didn't really care too much about it. It just was what it was. Uh, it it loosely. I mean, there, there's there's parts that are kind of recognizable with Constantine and parts that aren't like, I think uh, Angie brought up the fact that he's brunette, you know, I mean, it's kind of weird because um, yeah, he's got dark hair or whatever, but you know, I mean, that's neither here nor there. It's just, it's, uh, it's, it's just interesting because I would like to see more of that world. Right. So, so talking about this movie, you know, uh, or, or TV show, I guess, you know, it's, it's fine. It's just, uh, it, it just kind of cracks me up that we live in this world now where like everything is so overhyped that you can't just come out and say, Hey, there's a, there's a little known DC property. That's going right. to get <laughs> like, you know, Hey, you should check it out. You know, no, you got to be like, Oh, surprise hidden DC show coming to Netflix imminently. Like what? Well, and it seems like Netflix is going to be either guns or Max's, avenue to if you want to tell a different story outside of my universe go tell it on netflix yeah like yeah, if you if you want if we don't have a show that just doesn't work and so if we do see constantine on. again he may just say hey we'll give we'll, we'll give that to netflix let them let them put it out if they want to put it out whether yeah. that's through a tv series or or, or whatever because the first film didn't really make that much it only made i mean it was a hundred million you know, it's like a hundred million dollar budget only made back like two only made 240 I mean, yeah. Maybe in two thousand five, that was good, but today that would have been a complete failure of a of a film. It never would see a sequel. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna dip out, you guys. Hey, it's nice talking with you. Hey, it's good talking to you too, man. Yep. Yeah. You have a good yeah, one. I. I uh, but I, to your point, Inosh, I would like to see these Elseworld dark 
you know, I, I, I mean, like this, I'll give it a chance. I'll, I'll watch it when it comes out, see what it's about. Um, I mean, I, I, like I said, like I've said before, all, all these shows, I'll give them at least one chance to, to, to view. And if I like it, great. If I don't, then I can say, hey, I gave it a chance. It wasn't for me. Moving right. on. I won't prejudge based on articles, trailers, critic reviews. I mean, how many times have critics been wrong about so much? Oh, a lot. Um, so I don't even, I, I, when those things come up, I just turn the dial. I don't even listen to that noise. I hear you, man. I, I and you know more of a. I shift. didn't know about this until you guys brought it up. I mean, I didn't know this was coming to to Netflix. So, like I said, I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it a try when it hits. It's connected to the Sandman universe, which yeah, kill Neil Gaiman correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, it's it you know it's it's interesting, right? And and I'm glad that that little or known properties are are having a chance, you know. And uh, I mean, that's the only way that we have the 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 things of the future. Right. And this could be a stepping stone. I mean, they, they may say, hey, we're going to give you this. Let's see if it's successful. What works. Let's see what the reception is. And if it pans out, we might get other things that maybe uh, from an Elseworlds perspective, fans have been asking for that we might might get to see. But the problem with that is, is the more you pump that over to Netflix, the more you keep that sell Snyderverse to Netflix. Talk yeah. going. And to be clear to, to all those in the chat that haven't heard my opinions about Snyderverse, I'm a Snyder fan, love Snyderverse. Uh, I'm just, I'm realistic in understanding that Justice League was filmed in 2016, 2017. It's 2024. These actors have moved on. Okay. They, they are doing other things to bring them back would be, would be so expensive you're talking about like 300 million yeah. type yeah it'd be so because with some of them you're, bring you're them bringing them back at that point like i guarantee you at, the only way affleck comes back you gotta pay him the largest sum of money and that's that why he, the snyder <laughs> cut wasn't like like ben will only come back to zach he's had multiple if it's zach yeah sure i'll come back but other than that like yeah no it wasn't the snyder cut supposed to be was it four or six episodes originally that's what it was originally well they, four they, they, had, they were going back and forth that was the but that but the original plan was it was going to be episodes and the reason why it did not become episodes is because oh, yeah. of how expensive the contracts would be when you look at a, an episode breakdown versus yeah. just a full film they were going so to have i'm just saying even something like episode. that they wouldn't yeah. budge John and say no we're giving you this much money put it out the film and we're calling it a day i would love to see justice league two and three i would love to see the nightmare storyline play out i mean yeah. those are my favorite versions of the character and i grew up watching the christopher reeve stuff so i'm well aware of 78 but characters evolve characters change i like christopher reeve i like henry cavill superman as well it's guys it's it's i mean i'm not saying you guys on here but in general guys it's been seven seven years we're not going to see these films i don't even if people are saying well if we don't get live action what about animated or comic book i don't even think dc wants to even invest in animated or comic book to finish out telling the story i mean and zach he's i mean he's got so much on his plate i mean it'd be years for him to even then step away and say okay now yeah. i'm gonna go back to this 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 world and do it and he's i think he just recently said the only one he the only dc movie he would want to do is frank the miller's dark, yeah dark knight returns, dark dark knight knight returns. returns which, would be yeah. dope as well which i would love to see yeah. that i would yeah. love to see his version of that and i, I saw I could, that a little bit in i Batman could very much Superman. see gun letting him do that too as an else i don't see gun letting him do it i think I, guns I, verse guns universe would have to be done and, well, and I think it'll be a while it. for sure. I don't think it's going to be, gonna be anytime sure, soon. Yeah. But I, I can see him as if they plan out the Elseworld thing, right? And have already like certain sets of movies that have already done well, already things like that that are one-off adaptations or things like that. I think, I think that could. I don't see why not. Um, I, I agree with you, but I don't think. Uh, I don't think guns. I don't want to say ego. I don't think. He he will allow the spotlight to be taken off of his universe with something else, which was the excuse he was trying to give with the cancellation of Superman and Lois was you fans are not smart enough to know that that's a different Superman than mine. So we're canceling. We're ending the show. Season four is it. And then you're going to wait a year, year and a half before you see my Superman. And that's the only Superman you're going to have. So now we'll have nothing until we get what he wants to give us. And, and I think about it at the time he releases that film, his contract is up. So that's good. I, I believe his Superman will be a make or break for him. 
and the studio execs are going to see how that plays out. And if it's successful, they'll, they'll extend his contract. If it's not, then, hey, thank you for doing a Superman movie. We see that the fans, this is not what they want. Your contract is up. Have a nice day. And that's assuming the company doesn't even get bought out by somebody else before then and says, we don't even want to do Superman. And we don't, yeah, don't want to do your version of Superman. So we're changing regime again. You're fired. We're bringing another CEO in and we start this whole process over again. That happens all the time when companies acquire others. They they want to do those new those new owners. It's they want to do their own thing. It's crazy because WB used to be the king at the top, and they have been bought out for the last five for the five, for the last five years, eight years, whatever. It's been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that's yeah. crazy. Once upon a time, used to be the king of domination. It dominated the twenty tens, and and just went on a downhill fall after when you get. But out by four or five different well, people. Like, damn. Well, I mean, too. I mean, I, I remember being a kid, man. And I'll tell you what, for, for everybody who's a Marvel fan now, I just say, you know, look, when I was a kid, DC ruled. D DC ruled the playground. DC ruled, you know, the afternoon, you know, TV. Yeah, cartoon and everything, yeah. Oh, I mean, and and, and stayed pretty strong, even, even up to the 90s, even with X-Men, you know. Mm hmm in the spider-man series yep. and everything was which was immensely popular but that's when that's when that tide started to turn a little bit and then when right. you had 2000s and then you had the introduction of the mc justice Lee. Yeah. which comic book movies done really well and on a better scale uh you know it got people's interest in it turned the tide in a whole generation and it's amazing how quickly in a generation like tastes can change from one thing to another because man, everything was DC up to that point. DC, you know, I'm not, I'm not taking away from Marvel. Marvel obviously has been Marvel. I mean, you know, but, but let's be honest, Marvel was, was going out of business. That's why, that's why we've had this big debacle of Marvel trying to get back its characters under one roof, you know, to be able to make movies of them. And the, and the rights are over here and the rights are over there and the rights are over, you know, wherever is because they started selling it off. They, trying to keep the co the comic book company afloat and they figured we don't need these movie rights we'll sell these movies i mean at one point michael jackson wanted to make a smi a spider-man movie in yeah. which he starred as spider-man spider-man yeah yeah you know? and, and x-men movie as the professor x so i'm just saying there's you know like marvel marvel was not always on top marvel you know kudos on them they they did what they needed to do and then along came disney and Disney gave it that shot in the arm that it really needed. But man, growing up, everything was Superman and Batman and, you know, well, superpowers, you know. And the, and the thing that I think DC fans, I mean, I, I think, I, I mean, again, we're all, we're all fans of both. But I yeah. think as D, when you think, if you single, if you silo yourself as a DC fan only, how many times have you seen the characters rebooted? Hmm. Just think about, you had Keaton and and then Kilmer and then Clooney. And I mean, we've seen different, so many different actors play these characters. Now let's silo ourselves to the MCU. We've seen one Captain Rock. We've seen Chris Evans, only true besides the besides the Avengers movie from the 70s. I'm not even gonna count, I'm not even gonna count that at all. So let's just pretend that doesn't even exist for now. We've seen uh, Chris Evans, one one Captain America, to, uh Robert Downey Jr., one Tony Stark. How are the Marvel fans going to feel when they say, you know what? It's time to reboot this entire thing. Here is your brand Captain America, the first Avenger reboot 20, you know, 2030. This is your new Steve Rogers. This is your new Tony Stark. I mean, we, as I think as, again, DC fans, we're immune to our favorite actors playing these characters kind of either being removed, slighted, whatever. Right. I don't think the MCU hardcore MCU fans or in general haven't experienced that yet. Right. Cause they're going to oh, start, yeah, yeah. they're going to start looking back and uh -huh. say, man, Robert Downey Jr. Was a way better Iron Man than right. John <laughs> Doe. Who's playing the character. Now I don't like this. That's one. the reason why the, the audience one. accepted three different Spider-Man because they know yeah, we got three the, different Spider-Man. It's easy. Just like Batman. The yeah. Will start to come in, and and one of the first ones that they're going to have that with is Wolverine, because Ooh, Wolverine, yeah, or anything gets rebooted, and everybody loves Hugh Jackman. Yep. But, so the thing is, is that yeah, then all of a sudden you're going to have these factions, right, of people, just like you have Christopher Reeve versus Henry Cavill yep. and versus this person and that. I person. see it every day on Twitter about that. <laughs> that is going to be an interesting time, yep. because 
Uh, now, I will say this. You know, I say that, but I, I look at the Spider-Man situation. Yeah. And people... Right. People are very fond of each Spider-Man. The only problem now is that everybody wants each Spider-Man to go and continue forward. You know, they want Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man 4. They want, you know... Uh, uh, Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield's, you know, Spider-Man to continue. They, like, I've even seen people, like, wanting him to be Sony's, you know, Spider-Man and stuff. They want to put they want to put Andrew Garfield, probably, hands down, pound for pound, the best Spider-Man that we've gotten. And we did the watch party. We watched every mm. spider Preach. Including the animated ones, we watched everyone, and we all voted at the end of that of those watch parties who the best was. And overwhelmingly, we all said our Andrew Garfield. Like the other ones, not taken away from anybody. Okay, but the thing is, Andrew Garfield, man, he owned it. He wasn't in the best movies. But the only thing was that he was a little too pretty. Other than that, he nailed Peter Parker and he nailed Spider Man. I'm telling you. And so the thing is, though, is fans. They love all three of them, but you can't have everything, you know? Um, so yeah, you can, of- yeah, you can, you can't have, yeah, you can like, hey, like, like, hey, like Andrew, bro, the only reason why Andrew came back for No Way Home was because Kevin Feige called him and said, hey, can you please come back? I know Sony did you dirty. They fired you for no reason. Uh, that was the Japan boss over, <laughs> over sea and stuff. Were you on that phone call, Anthony? No, no, that's what the but rumors like, say. I don't, I don't. I know I, they that's what the dirty. rumors say. Anthony was taking. Uh, Anthony was taking meeting minutes. No, that, that's what really? the rumors say. Apparently, but, no, but, I just, I just like, wait, wait, hold know. on, Anthony, hold on, Anthony. You're all sitting here like, like Feige's just like, I know they did you dirty. I know they treated you wrong, honey. But let me tell you, girl, you just come right on over here to the Marvel. And I was, right over here to the I was no, standing that's there the rumor, that's with what the, the coffee rumor's and been donuts, the last three years, waiting man. to put them down. That's the reason. That's the rumors. We'll watch, that's we'll the watch rumors. The, I mean, we'll watch Superman seventy-eight before we decide what to do with your Spider-Man. Yeah, no, nah, but that's that's the rumors been saying that he doesn't want to do any of that universe and he doesn't like the, those. Like, I wouldn't do it. I would never suggest the actor. Yeah, let's. Yeah, let me join the Sony universe. Come on. You have Sony actors talking shit about Adam Webb every other week. Well, not oh, just that, man. but you know, I mean, nobody wants to join that big universe. Well, now that Venom's even coming to an end, you know, someone like Tom Hardy would never come back and do something like this again. Oh, how? No. Once his no once, way. now that his contract is coming up, no he's, he's way. Like, no, I'm not doing this again. No and I think way. He, I think his I think he enjoyed his, making those movies, but there's no way. But I think his I think in the back I, my opinion is back of his mind is and a lot of these actors actors and actresses have the same opinion that Dakota Johnson had. Did it, got a paycheck, don't really care, moving yeah, on. Moving I mean, on. She, yeah. she unless, knows, unless she knows you're not really... she's she'll she was never gonna come back. Even if that even if Madame Mo was was successful, her her experience that she described doing that movie. Unless they had put, unless they were to put her under a three to five film contract, she was never going to come back and do another one, or she would have found a way out of that contract. Yeah, yeah she would have fought. She, Tony would have to pay her out and stuff yep. like that. Just like no way, I'm not doing. And hey, that's good that they talking shit about so the Sony universe because that's to remind other actors don't join that universe. They trick you into thinking they're in the MCU. And, like, Wait, and that's and that's to you know, yeah. to, you know, to you know, just point. That's the problem. You have this core well-known character sitting under the umbrella of another uh, studio who doesn't seem to know how to handle the character. Mm-hmm. And they will, and they refuse to give up the rights to allow the attempt of handling that character correctly yeah. because they don't want to hand over all that money. Yep. And that's the problem, right? Is that as long as there is that kind of money to be made, even putting out crappy stuff, that they'll never give up the rights to it. And why would you? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, like, honestly, we, we're all sitting here, like, you know, in our, in our, in our, our beautiful, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm imagining the chamber seats from, you know, uh, the prequels, right? You know, we're in our floating car, like kind of floating above everything, acting like, well, we would do the right thing by this. But let's be honest. I mean, like, it's, it's money, right? It's business. And I think that we forget that day because we're emotionally attached to it and and like all these arguments are absolutely 100 percent dead on the, the thing is is sony's never going to give up that nor should they really from a business standpoint like if i'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah i understand them but if like, i'm an investor in sony i never want them to give up spider-man 
So I agree. I agree with you. Is it's a business, and it's easy for us to uh, pick this apart, pick the CEOs, pick the right. uh, you know the, the, the executives uh, uh, apart to say their decisions. However, however, I think we any fan can rightfully say DC screwed up when they said we want to be like Marvel. We need to keep up with Marvel. If DC would have kept the course. And allowed Zach and David Ayer and Patty and all of them to build the universe out as they had intended, it would have been successful. Yep. I mean, if it was in this, and, I know, and many people might disagree, Zach Snyder's just was a, a, an exact, was proof of that. Had they have released even a cut down version of that film, and then Zach, as he normally does, releases his director's cut on physical media. Um, I mean, that would have definitely led us into uh, whether it was parts two and three. I mean, we were promised a cyborg movie at one point, his Green, his Green Lantern movies. I mean, we were promised a, a huge scale, but nope, they, they saw, well, geez, look how everyone's like in Marvel. We want that and we're not getting that. So we're scared. And now we need to course correct two two movies into their universe. They course corrected. Imagine if Marvel had done that. What were the first two Marvel movies? What what was it? Iron Man and a oh, whole yeah. yeah I mean, Hulk if they would have of course corrected that soon, you're looking at 15 to 18 years of films and TV shows that never would have probably happened, or at least not happened the way we see them today. Well, Costa Nostra, don't you think? But admit it, yeah. Admit just talking earlier, right? About about how like Marvel is kind of pseudo trying to come around and you know put out some darker stuff and some more you know serious stuff. You know, that's not as comic booky. And sometimes I sometimes I just look at what Zach has done. Think to myself, people just weren't ready for it. Well, think about Watchmen. No one was ready to see what Zach was able to do, and that was that was de- Watchmen and Three Hundred were always deemed. You can never make a movie out of these graphic novels. It right. can't be done. Um, it's been it's been requested. They've been you know scripts have come in, but nope, nope, not going to do it. And the only and Three Hundred. The reason he was initially turned down wasn't be, wasn't because it wasn't a good story. It was because the executive said, "Well, we're already doing Troy. We don't want to do 300 at the same time we're doing Troy. We got we got Brad Pitt doing this film. What do you bring into the table?" And it was only what after he did Dawn of the Dead that they said, "Oh, okay. Well, because well, you know it didn't work out before. What do you want to do now?" And that's when he well, said he wanted to do 300. Actually, actually, no. With with 300, it was he. They actually shot some of the some I'm of the, about the they, i'm talking about the full to do the actual full film well yeah I mean, for for it they turned him down and he shot some uh, like a test they showed it to him and, and they showed said, it to him correct oh wait yeah. you can make it look like this and for a oh, lower budget I, and I, yeah. that's when the studio was like okay yeah you can go do that i i gotta address this comment so so here's the thing elsa i i get what you're saying about that but that's not why that's that's not why people like the avengers because they just didn't um, like that's not why. Like that's how it worked out, and so people, so people absolutely can go back, you know, in, and even say like, you know, well, we were introduced to these characters. But here's the thing: we're getting ready to start a DCU. Like all the people who literally had that exact same excuse and said, well, like that Zach, you know, you know, rushed it by trying to put, you know, uh, characters in it first. Like DC needed to do that first of all because they needed to to separate themselves from what Marvel did first of all. But we're literally getting ready to get a whole universe now. That is already, we're picking it up in the middle. We're not getting any origins, no origin stories for these characters, for Superman, for Batman. We're literally meeting Batman. For everybody that griped and complained that Batman was in his 40s and Batman v Superman, how old does Batman got to be to have a 14 year old son? Right? He's got to be at least in his, you know, er, mid 30s. Mid 30s. Right. But I think think what Elsa is is trying to say there. (laughs) That's at best. But also, I just want to say, I just want to say, like, we don't have to have origin stories for all these characters. We don't have to have individual movies for all these characters. People know these characters. All you got to have is one. And, and this is and this is just it. People expected DC to be Marvel 2.0. But the problem was, was. The, the influx of Marvel fans that came in during the early years of the MCU, because they were discovering Marvel, 
it became this huge Marvel versus DC thing. Even before DC got started to get things up and going, it was Marvel's Marvel's awesome, Marvel's awesome, DC sucks. It was already the thinking. It was literally already the only Batman seemed to be like oblivious to that because you still had, you know, the, the Christian Bale movies, right? The Christopher Nolan movies. But the thing is, is that when, when the new world started, man, when Man of Steel started, people were already looking for reasons to hate on it because simply it was DC. And I'll be honest with you, and I'm not saying that that's the only thing, I'm not saying it's only, but it is a huge factor in it. Because people, I, I still go online to this day, and there are people who act like this is some petty thing. Nerd Costa Nostra put it best. We're fans, like, yeah, I'm a predominantly uh, DC fan, right? But I'm a fan of Marvel. Like, you don't have to be a fan of one or the other. But there are people, there are so many people that don't get that. And so they feel like it's their tribe right like marvel is their tribe because they've come up watching these movies man and they love these movies and so they can they feel like they're betraying the thing that they love to just go watch or enjoy a dc film like to be able to just say like i like i you know how many people i talk to on a daily basis because they know what a big dc fan i am they will sit there and they will try to placate me by by like they don't want to have to say something good about a DC movie, but they will like come out and say the good things that they loved about DC movies. But then they'll 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 try to reel it back and act like they don't really like it. So real quick, I think there's a I, point of clarification. Austin yeah, wants to jump I, it on. I think I think what else it was trying to to say there, like yes, I, I get what you're saying. You know, it's like it doesn't need to be origin, doesn't it? But the fact of the matter is, like yes, they needed to like. She's got a point. There is very little to care about. Batman in Batman versus Superman because he's a a Batman that a lot of people outside of us comic DC fans have never seen or heard of. It's a shock, you know. Number two, you, like there, there's a so it's not about necessarily that, they, but they they needed to do certain things like either give Man of Steel a, a true sequel. They they needed to take time to do at least one or two other things before they rushed and convoluted you know, Batman versus Superman with all this stuff and then expected the audience to have a big emotional reaction. Well, when Superman dies in BVS, I couldn't care less. The only thing that I will concede on that is, is doomsday because, because I didn't really want to, I, I didn't want to see doomsday in Batman v Superman. When I saw it, when I saw the trailer for it, and, you know, here comes Doomsday jumping down and, you know, the close up, whatever. I went, oh, really? Doomsday? Now, I will say this. I was glad that at least they had the guts to kill Superman in the second movie if you're going to bring Doomsday in because you don't bring Doomsday in even though it's not the real Doomsday. But that's the problem. It gets so freaking convoluted. Like, I, I'm and I as a fan, like. That's the problem is like we can decipher all this stuff, right? Like we we understand what these things are. We understand that it's not really the real doomsday. But the average person hears that and they go, what? Yeah. What do you mean it's not the real doomsday? What, what are you talking about? Now, I get it. But the thing is, like, you're going to tell another Batman origin story for Batman v Superman? No, we don't need, again, we're not talking necessarily origin. Yeah, it's, just like, it's just like you said with, with the DCU, right? They're not necessarily origin movies. They're starting already... I mean, technically, that's kind of where BVS starts, right? You know, but Batman's already been Batman. He's been right. in the universe. Superman is the new guy. You know? So that's, that's the type of thing. I'm not talking origin stories, but we should have gotten, for sure, that Batman solo movie before. We should have gotten either that or a, a Superman direct sequel or something like that because all of a sudden, they just went to Batman versus Superman and they said, let's throw every major comic book storyline, the Dark Knight Returns, the death of Superman, Wonder Woman, and let's convolute this bad boy and get, and get and try and get something for every DC fan that they like. Okay, if you like this, then, then you're going to have, you know, the Dark Knight Returns Superman, if you like. And at the end of the day, you ended up, they ended up butchering all of these great on their own stories. Like, that was for me, even not being the biggest Superman fan, watching him die in the second movie, I was like, you guys decided to take what what is a phenomenal storyline on its own and just 
take the cool part of it or the controversial part of it and throw it in there because wh- why? Why the hell does Superman need to die in the second movie? It makes absolutely no sense. Well, it's the catalyst for the rest of the series. It's a stupid catalyst. That, that, that's, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> it, 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 you know, but that's what that's what separates it. That's what separates it from everything else that we've already seen. Well, Again, I think that would have been fine, but when you're starting a universe, it's a, it's a turnoff to a lot of people. Right, but here's the point. Here's the point. Like to what to what Costa Nostra just said. Here, here's the thing. But if they do that, you know what everybody does? They just compare them to Marvel. Right? These movies are are of no significance whatsoever. Then, but they at that point, it's going to happen anyways. No, the, they, the comparison to Marvel. Listen, I, because I will argue that Batman v Superman is a treasure. Is it perfect? No, but it's a whole lot better than most of the MCU movies that that I've enjoyed. I and give it. I give it that it's a better I, movie. I, will go, yes. I, I have seen. I have seen the Ultimate Edition in the theater, and I will just tell you, Landon came up to me after we saw that movie in the theater when we watched the spe- the, the Ultimate Edition with um, uh, like all of our friends and stuff. You know, the other streamers stuff. You know, a bunch of people were there for it. Right, right. Uh, and we we went to go see it was for AFSP. And Landon came up to me afterwards and just says, wow, dad, like, I love this movie, but seeing this, this version of this movie on the big screen, like, this is my favorite movie. And I, I would just say that, like, the reason why that movie works is because of the way that they did it, because of the way that they introduced that world, instead of, instead of just trying to do the, the old Trust and true. I'll, I will give you, Austin, there's a lot of stuff in there. And there's some stuff that probably could have been trimmed out, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, I love the fact that it's completely different than the MCU. I love it. No, I, I, completely, I completely agree. I, I love it that it's different than the MCU. It's, it's, but I, again, certain decisions like that, how, you can't expect at the start of your universe an audience – to be following you when you make a decision to kill Superman off like, and then go, Oh yeah, by the way, we got a justice league movie coming out in a few years. That's only going to have 20 minutes of Superman. I, <laughs> that's like, in my opinion, I thought it was, I, I thought it made sense because it, it allowed the redemption story for Batman. I'm not saying it doesn't make sense for the, no, I'm saying, I'm no, saying I'm saying it's, for... it's a, it's a, it's a, it, when you're starting a universe, like I said, it's a turnoff. It's a, it's like, why do I care now? You know, and I'm like, saying for me, as a star of a universe, for this, the way this was, these stories were given to us, to me, it made sense. You had Man of Steel. And then if we think about how Man of Steel ended, how BVS began, we got to then see Batman Bruce Wayne's perspective of what was happening in Man of Steel, why Batman became even more uh, angry and hateful, especially towards Superman. And then by then him dying, it then allowed Batman to have his redemption arc come into um, Justice League while bringing back Superman. And then I think, again, we would have seen a much more uh, expanded story with these characters, even Cyborg, uh, you know, Aquaman, all those had we had gotten the additional Justice League movies. And then from there, if they had branched off into their own films from that point, to me, that would have made sense, especially when you already set up Deathstroke already as a, a villain at the end of, of BVS. Because if you would have had Man of Steel, if you did on Man of Steel, Man of Steel 2, then a Batman movie, what I'm not saying we have, I'm not asking you this question directly, but what would that Batman movie even been about? Would it have been an earlier version of what we would have seen in BVS? And then what would the time jump have been between Batman, the ba- Batman movie, and BVS? We would have had to have had a, a significant time jump for them Batman to be at that point of his Batman career to be like the like the Frank Miller version of being a very hateful Batman. So. Well, but see, see, Elsa, that that's you kind of made made the point. Nobody knew who who Cyborg is, so if you just put out a Cyborg movie, nobody's going to come to see the Cyborg movie. But you introduce Cyborg, this character that other people have not seen, in BVS, right? Just just briefly, and then you set it up that he's in the Justice League movie, and then when you see Zack's Justice League, you see that, like you just said, the story is 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 fleshed out. It's it's done well. 
a lot of this goes right back to studio interference, right? Like that a lot of the problems that people have with the movies are because it, they were chopped to hell. Uh, because Warner, somebody at Warner Brothers was going, but you can't make a, a two and a half hour movie. You got to make a two hour movie. You know, I mean, it's just, so we're going to cut a half hour of, of literally all of the, all of the motivations for your characters like Batman and like Lex Luthor. And, you know, so yeah, I, I understand the, the normal, you know, thought process of, you know, you make a movie about a character and then, you know, you add them to the ensemble, but to, to, Cosa Nostra's point, it's the same point that I make, is that I thought it was cool that they introduced them in that movie in that way to say these metahumans are out there. These people are out there. You don't know who they are and you're not supposed to care about who they are right now because you don't know who they are. But we're going to whet your appetite a little bit by showing you that these characters exist. There is a one. Now, the, the one thing I will say is, is kind of silly is like having the logos for them in the email thing, right? Like Again, not perfect not executed perfect. Uh, I get that maybe Lex Luthor might put some symbols to him maybe, but like you got like Aquaman, you got Cyborg, you got the Wonder Woman with the two, you know, I get it. Right. Uh, I, I, I think those things and like, like Cosa Nostra said, like I, I try to be understanding, right. I try to be fair, you know, so I'm not saying it's perfect, but the way that they kick that off, if we had, if they would have allowed, and that's the point, right. Uh, Cosa Nostra, if they would have allowed these movies to to proceed the way that they were supposed to, it would have made a whole heck of a lot more sense. So I so I feel like the problem is sometimes is people people are literally out there judging Zack Snyder for things that were Warner Brothers all along. Just the fact that they had Batman versus Superman, for example. That was not just Zack Snyder's idea that he brought to the table and said, hey, right. Warner Brothers, I'm doing a Batman versus Superman movie. Warner Brothers told Zack, you have to do a Batman versus Superman movie. Make it work. Right. Been trying to do it for the last 20 years. So I'm just saying. Make it work. Yeah. Like, like, you know, given the fact that, man, they wrote a great movie. If, if, if you seriously, and, and this is what I have found, if you're honest and you sit and, and, and maybe you have to watch it with me, I don't know. Maybe I need to do a watch party of it for people who don't like the movie. But what I find is, is when I sit down with people and we talk about the movie and we actually watch the movie, they end up seeing things that they never saw before for whatever reason. And maybe the movie is just that way that it has these things in it that maybe you have to have a certain level of understanding. I don't know. Maybe that, maybe, it, maybe it is truly like a, a deep dive DC type of thing. Cause there are so many storylines in it, Austin, you know, there, there's, there's a variety of storylines. Well, it. yeah. And honestly you need to, you know, to, to, you need to have an understanding of those stories. And like, look, I love the movie for what it is as you know, as, but I have an understanding of these, I've known these kids. So like, like you guys, I'm okay with seeing something different, but it's no surprise to me why the general audience rejected well, it. Civil War, yes, correct. Yeah, I agree. Civil, I agree. Civil War, though, but but Elsa, Civil War only came about because of Batman v Superman. Literally, yeah. it was announced afterwards, and and it literally came out right around the same time. And and it was actually it's actually been reported that Feige kind of set that up. Uh, Feige can say all that he wants, like all these people can say all that they want that like, oh, they don't care. They, they want other you know businesses to be successful. And they do because it creates competition and, it, and it's good, a certain level of competition. But Feige knew absolutely that he had the backing of the MCU and a, and a built in fan base that is that if he put out Civil War around that same time and said, oh, look at these heroes are fighting. And let's be honest, those heroes were not really trying to hurt each other, uh, except for at the end where, you know, Tony and. And Cap fight, and I thought that that fight was stupid. And for everybody who who gives Batman v Superman a hard time about that fight, and you go back and you watch all the fighting in Civil War, that's the worst part of that movie. There's so many great visuals in that movie. There's such a great story in that movie at its heart. But the thing is, when all the when all the heroes start fighting, and they're literally referencing the fact that they're not trying to even hurt each other, but they're all pulling their punches. Well, now you just created a cool poster, but that's all that you've created. It looks really cool at the airport for all your heroes to be running towards each other. But let's be honest, not a fight. 
right? It's not a civil war because they're not really fighting. They don't want to fight each other. You got you got Ant Man going, Captain America. That's not that you know that's not wanting to fight somebody it's not like it's not like batman looking at superman and blaming him for the death of thousands of people well and, and, and the, the batman v it doesn't the, the same weight you know what i mean and so like and and then then you have at the end with tony and cap fighting over bucky and you have your hero literally ready to kill another two other heroes full well knowing that 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 the that the man who killed his his family had nothing to do with it intentionally that was mind controlled to do it and yet he still is just going to kill those people but nobody complains about listen i'm not saying that's a point of contention for me i'm just saying with the amount of hate and and vitriol that that the DC universe gets and that Zack Snyder gets for things like Batman, you know, jumps into a warehouse and like grabs a guy's gun, you know, that gets aimed at somebody else and the guy gets shot. You know, it's not like Batman took the gun away and started picking people off in the warehouse, you know, but what people want to act like he's a murderer, literally. And you've got somebody like Tony Stark who is going to kill two people in cold blood. That makes no sense to me. And what it is, is, is it's a, it's, it's a world that we live in where Marvel is on top. So the majority of people are going to defend that and they're going to put down anything else. And I think somebody said it in the, uh, in the, uh, chat already. Uh, and it might've been, I think it was, uh, Jason Knight. Like if, uh, if, if the MCU had made Batman be Superman, it would have been cheered. People would have loved it because it was the MCU. The, the only reason why people have, the only couple of reasons why people have such a hard time with these movies from DC is one, because Warner Brothers shot themselves in the foot many times with these, with these properties and, and what could and couldn't be in a movie and all that stuff. But then also the fact that it's just simply not a Marvel movie. Well, and for the Batman v Superman with the fo- the folders with the symbols, I, I, in my opinion, I think that was their attempt to say, "Hey, this is Cyborg. Hey, you're going to be seeing him. This is Flash. You're going to be seeing him." And then when they showed those small little snippets of Aquaman under the water with that, you know, that little camera thing following him, and he and he swam off, or Flash at the in the in the convenience store at the cooler, that quick little snippet was, in my opinion. I meant to briefly introduce you to those characters because those are the ones that you're going to see coming up in, the, in another in the next film or in the next couple of films. That was there's that was a very simplistic way of saying, "Hey, there's these other metahumans out there. We're going to be introducing you to, so expect to see them." And just like we saw Flash briefly in Suicide, uh, Suicide Squad, yep, uh, with Captain Boomerang. I mean, it was what not even six seconds, but you knew it was Flash though, and you knew and you expected to see more of him, but we. Same thing happened with with the, with David Ayer's Suicide Squad. The same thing happened to Zack Snyder. Uh, so we won't no, no need to to rehash that. Now, as far as Civil War, if, if many people take a step back and look at Civil War and then go look at the Civil War storyline in the comics, right. night and day, see how, how, not even comparable. Right. That was the big. That was the big thing. Was was it was not even comparable to to the comic book, but. Even with all that, people received. I don't think it was just Marvel. I mean, people received. I think Civil War a bit more was again. It felt did feel a little bit more earned in that. Like, okay, we've seen this is kind of like a mid uh, an Avengers two point five. You know, yeah, or something, like, yeah. you know, like we've we've gotten we've seen a lot of these solos. We, for, I, as a fan, I think at that point it was like, okay, we've we've kind of this is cool. Our first one seeing everybody together, and then they go at it, you know? Like, and the only person that got hurt and really hurt and all that was Roadie. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, but uh, and even that they took away by giving him robot. Legs. Correct. Like, so no, no, was, no, no, so no, 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 no. The robot legs was fine. They, what they took away from that was in the atrocity that was secret invasion. Because yes. I was getting ready to say it wasn't really God, even Roadie. <laughs> how could they be so stupid? Let's just the- pretend though. It's the real Roadie. And oh they, and to your God. point, they, they took that, that harsh uh, consequence of what was happening by saying, Oh, we're going to erase those consequences. Tony gave him robot legs. He's good to go. And all, no harm, no foul. That's right. What happened yeah. in BVS. The harm, the, the foul was that Superman is now dead. And now 
the world's without Superman. This is not what the world's like. And now Batman with the rest of the Justice League need to figure out how they're now going to handle what what we now know to be uh, Dark Side, not you know, not just Steppenwolf, but Dark Side yeah. and Steppenwolf. Oh, well, we got to figure out how we can bring Superman back to life or bring him back, right? Great, um, and again, that that's what feeds back to my my opinion about the redemption story, specifically for for Batman, realizing, yep, I was wrong. Now, how do I fix this? Right, right. No, that, that that's that's so, great. all right. Uh, real quick here, uh, five dollars super chat from Tony Movie Chappy D Nine Neil Blomkamp fan. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. It says thoughts on the Thing prequel. Uh, very underrated. Too much hates. I've never seen it. I haven't either. I've never. I didn't seen know there was a thing prequel. <laughs> I'm just yeah, finding I, this out. I'm aware that there's a thing prequel uh, that's out. There. I've never seen the thing. I, I it, the thing is what? Always, I, yeah, I know the thing has always been one of those movies that like I I I know that I need to see like what it is, but I have never seen it, and so I did not know that there was a prequel to it, and especially not one that gets a lot of hate. So yeah. Oh, so this is the the thing that came out in 2011. That was the prequel. So I mean, it is so it's not recent. The one with the same name. Yeah, it's because it says oh, right so here. It, wasn't a, it is it a wasn't direct a prequel to the 1982 film of the same title by John Carpenter, which was an adaptation of the 1983 novel Who Goes There by oh. John W. Campbell. It tells the story of a turn. Yeah, so that that was meant to be a prequel to the original. So Jason here, Jason here, who is uh, who is my. Uh, who will forever be my resident uh, horror movie that guy. Sucks. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, the did, returns on that to... were not good. It, it, it actually lost money. Budget $38 million and only made $31.5 million. Ooh, that's bad. That's bad. That's very bad. I did want to also say, because Jason said, the great irony is without Zack Snyder, the MCU has nothing. Civil War, Infinity War, and Endgame were all ripped off of Snyder's story arc for the three Justice League and BBS. I, I'm sorry, I got to push back against that. I mean, look, before even Snyder came in the picture, they'd already made a billion dollars with Avengers. So the MCU was just fine. They were already headed in the direction of Thanos. That, that was 2012 before Man of Steel ever came out, before any of that stuff ever happened. They were already on that path and on that direction. Yeah. Did they maybe take a couple things after or whatever? I mean, yeah, but the MCU... It definitely doesn't owe that much to Zach. Thanos Snyder. may have been the main villain, but how they got there, I don't think would have been the same without knowing what Zach's plans were. How they got that? You mean like Endgame? Uh, yes. Especially since we know about the whole time travel issue. Yeah, I I disagree with that. I, well, I think on that note. Yeah, and, that, and yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I can I can respect that. So yeah. I've got, I got to get going, but, uh, Mark, what's up, Marty? Uh, what's, uh, what's, what's your deal? We got to go. I, I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Anyways, uh, great conversation today, by the way, guys, oh, my camera's up here. Great thank conversation. You. Uh, thank you guys for being, thanks to all the panelists who were here today. Like we had, we had a full group here today. It was pretty awesome. Made for yeah. good conversation for sure. And uh, thanks to all of you guys who uh, who showed up today and in the chat. We appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, thanks to Marty, huh? <laughs> Marty, shout out, Marty. The poor, the poor dog. Like his hair, it got so matted. Like, like it wasn't even that long. But like him just going outside, he rolls around in the in the dirt and everything else. And like got so mad, we had to, like shave him. We haven't like we had to stop because it was taking too long. So we still got to shave his face a little bit. So he, so he's got this skinny body with his great big old head now. <laughs> I know the feeling. Oh, there you go. There you go. So guys, like we always say, oh Marty McFly, giving me kisses. Don't let anybody tell you that your fandom doesn't matter. Don't tell anybody that their fandom doesn't matter either. But seek to have good conversations, right? And treat everybody with respect, right? Yeah. And if you do that, there'll always be a place for you here in the Poindexter Lounge. Till next time, guys. <laughs> what are you doing? See you guys later. We'll see you guys Peace later. Out. Y'all members, stay uh, stay nerdy and do all the cool things and uh, show up tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow with some more topics and some more things to discuss. 
And like uh, Mr. Rogers said, we'll have things you'll want to talk about. I will too. <laughs> Bye.